Deland, Florida. I just see we that. It's a weird name for Why a city. Why do they call that the land? Yeah. It's near to sea. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> that, that joke's celebrating 45 years. I'm happy you guys <laughs> played along because I just go, the land by the sea. Let's, I was yeah, ready yeah, for yeah. him. Willie, on down the road. Let's go. Pick it up. The land by the sea. We're in Florida. What's up? We are. We actually are working on getting a, getting a billboard down there. <laughs> no somewhere, kidding? Somewhere between the land and Daytona Beach and having it the, a sign, idea. a billboard put up with an arrow, the land this way to see that way it just for our and just people driving by are going to go what the hell <laughs> um yeah yeah we had a a uh a, a, a small circus come through town in deland okay and uh, they they brought in a, a guy at full clown regalia wow guy comes in i mean this it's this is right out of the simpsons before there was a simpsons this guy comes in and uh he comes into the air booth and we're it's during uh during a couple songs and we're talking back and forth. The guy's smoking a cigarette, of course. And then, uh, so we go to uh, into the break. and go, hey, this is Tom. I'm here with, uh, oh, in those days, this is the chief. I'm here with, uh, whatever his name was, Frobo the Clown. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, tell me, uh, what, no, what's going to be happening at the, at the circus uh, here at the fairgrounds? And I kid you not, the guy has a horn. <laughs> and I look at him like. You're kidding me. <laughs> I, I never spoke a word. I've got to find a tape of this. That's great. So That's the whole so time funny. I'm going, so are there animals? <laughs> 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 that means yes. Um, in retrospect, kind of funny. But he didn't tell me before we went on the air. Oh, by the way, I'm not allowed to That makes it even funnier. Did he funnier. talk while the cameras were off? Did he talk while you were off air, rather? Of course. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, he walked in and was going, oh, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> yeah, we're going to the beach tomorrow, blah, 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 blah. And he had, and he, even though it was radio, when he didn't have any cameras in the studio, he was in full clown regalia <laughs> at six in the morning. Because yeah, that aspect tricks me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh, there, there are many great stories. Uh, there was the time that the snake came out of the uh, uh, Gates yeah. board which is an old-fashioned uh, radio thing. With knobs on it? Yeah, oh, that was mm. terrifying. We were in a swampy area of Florida. Why don't you guys use a computer for that instead? No, they didn't have them. Back then, uh, didn't have it. Well, the government, the government had them much like they are now, but they didn't release them yet. For alien tech. Yeah, we right. didn't even have the Associated Press Newswire, so... Um, you had our, UPI. Our mass, our mass, we didn't have UPI? That I heard cranberry juice helps with that. We, 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 we had a, uh, a very drunken... UTI. No, not if a boy has it, Christy. Uh, n n this is a much funnier story than what you guys are doing <laughs> we had a very drunken uh news guy and uh, he would just read the weather out of the newspaper and i swear to god one morning he said uh on land area weather, partly sunny details on page twelve. <laughs> I, I mean, that's right out of that's right out of Mary Tyler Moore, but it's absolutely real. That's great. He was um, quite the dipso. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. More sports coming up after Tom gives you this advice on gift buying. This is actually some good advice. That was almost a real announcer. This is <laughs> this is this is really good advice. Um, it's kind of uh, sexy advice, really. I'm Ooh. talking about uh, the perfect gift. This is something you can get for her. And you may get a benefit out of this. I'm talking about the naturally nude pajamas from our friends at Pajamagram. And I'm going to tell you, you've got to get this done today. If you've been watching the news, you know that the uh, the uh, tunnels of uh, commerce, when it comes to shipping, getting a little bit crowded. So I'd get this done right now. The naturally nude pajamas from Pajamagram. By the way, they're America's pajama experts, of course. The naturally nude pajamas, they'll feel like her own bare skin. She'll love slipping into these every night. Hint, hint. Oh, yeah. you, you may slip into something also. Perhaps a different pair of pajamas, but oh, uh, at, 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 at best. Uh, she's going to love the feeling of wearing next to nothing at all. And you'll love the way they look. Check them out at pajamagram.com. They've also got fun pajamas. A couple years ago, I got everybody in my family the Santa Claus pajamas and the hats. They Did were you fantastic. put that picture Willie, up, Willie? That yeah. was outstanding. I put it up on my Instagram story yesterday. Yes. So, uh, cool. Maybe I'll post it again today. Oh, so the picture of us in the, in the pajamas? No, it's, it was just... Yeah, it's just me and Sam in that photo. I'll yeah. look for the group one, though. I can find it somewhere. Oh, I've got it somewhere. It's, yeah. hard, to, uh, right, it's hard to notice Willie with Sam in the picture because Sam's so amazing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gosh. Oh. It, yeah. See, he looks good. The guy's got oh a magical mustache. Oh, uh. he's, he's magic is what he is. Mm. Yeah. Now, Josh, I give you permission to speak. If we were to, uh, I was trying to think of something I could get you. How about if I get your brothers and you all Santa Claus pajamas? <laughs> <laughs> is, that a, is that a Yes. So will you please get me their sizes? Because the last time I did this and I got you guys all the T-shirts, you arrived back to, I love the T-shirts, except none of them fit. Well, they didn't fit because you gave me the wrong sizes, you jackass. Wouldn't that be great then if we get a picture of all you guys dressed as Santa? Wouldn't that be fun? 
Yeah, okay. That was a ho-ho-ho. Yeah, of course. And then, and then one of your brothers asked me to get <clears throat> his wife the naturally nude pajamas. I... <clears throat> Must be something going on there. Oh, uh, pajamagram.com, the naturally nude pajamas. Uh, get you got to do it right now to get this done, okay? They guarantee delivery before Christmas. Do it right now. Free gift packaging. Did I mention that? The naturally nude pajamas. Pajamagram.com. Do yourself a favor. You can get this done right now, guys. Pajamagram.com. Tell them the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Coming up, we have some stuff in sports and a bunch of other really cool stuff. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, Mark Allison here with you on a Thursday. It's December 10th, 2020. Hope you were here late in the show yesterday. Our mystery guest, number seven, Joe Theismann, called in to surprise Chick McGee. Talk about the Washington football team's big victory over the previously undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. And also, Joe Theismann has a new book out about leadership. Pretty cool. Hope you were able to catch it. I know Chick McGee was surprised. Our mystery guest yesterday, Joe Theismann, number seven. Pretty cool. Thanks, Joe, for calling in. You made Chick's week. Maybe his month, perhaps his year. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with your Bob and Tom Entertainment News from the Navy Federal Credit Union Entertainment News Desk. The names of America's preeminent infectious disease expert and its incoming vice president have topped this year's list of most mispronounced words. Anthony Fauci and Kamala Harris are among a number of famous names that made the list released Wednesday. The U.S. captioning company, which captions and subtitles real-time events on TV and in courtrooms, has been compiling the list with Babbel, a language learning app company, since since 2016, Todd Ezrin, a singer, easy for me to say, Todd Ezrin, a senior linguist at Babel, said the list unsurprisingly reflects a year dominated by presidential politics and the coronavirus pandemic. Police in South Florida descended on what they thought was an armed break-in at a men's clothing store Tuesday morning after people were spotted storming in with rifles but arrived to find a music video in process of filming. A Pembroke Pines police spokeswoman says the rifles were fake, the men holding them actors in a video. The Mammy Herald reports a store manager says the shopping center was closed at the time and the film crew was allowed in the store. Pembroke Pines officials say the city hadn't been given a permit for the filming and the shopping center's management team says it also was not aware. Police say, however, nobody was charged. Police say a stash of cocaine worth up to $2 million discovered inside a trailer hauling guard from California after staff at a northwest Indiana highway way station grew suspicious, perhaps hungry. State troopers called Monday to a Porter County way station along Interstate 94 after a staff member inspecting a commercial truck's trailer spotted a black case that appeared inconsistent with its load of 18,000 pounds of minced garlic. The Northwest Indiana Times reports the case contained about 50 kilos of cocaine, estimated to be worth nearly $2 million on the street. Troopers arrested two California men who were in the truck. There you have it, your entertainment news. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Invited is being asked to be in the wedding party. That's the yes. and buy your own thing. And you you got to buy your own dress, and you got to fly. This is such a guy stupid. girl thing, isn't it? This is. If I ever get married, the there will be no wedding parties. Yep. Now, Josh, <laughs> have you, have you ever been in a wedding? Yeah. yeah, yeah, plenty. Yeah, plenty. And, of, and what was your role? 
Ring bearer. Ring bearer? <laughs> That's right. I, I, I had <laughs> onion rings in my pocket. Before. <laughs> That's Clapping. Very, uh, now he's taking credit for you saying, <laughs> you know what he is. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Morning laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Just might be the best medicine. If you want to turn your daddy parts orange, eat some Cheetos and watch some porn. Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> Hello, Americans. It's that time of year again. You received your tax forms in the mail, and now it's time to settle up with the IRS. <laughs> when it comes to tax preparation, well, listen to this. Honey, we got our tax forms. Are you going to try to do it yourself again this year? I don't know. It's such a pain in the butt. Taxes can be a pain in the butt. That's why you should let the specialists at Tax Preparation H Incorporated do your taxes for you. Tax Preparation H Incorporated relieves the pain often associated with filing your taxes. At Tax Preparation H Incorporated... Can 20 at Q95, it's the Bob and Tom Show. It certainly is, and thank you very much. And Christy Lee looking great today with a quick forecast. Thank you, Tom. Q95 Fox 59 weather brought to you by the Car X Man. Plenty of sunshine. Look for a high of 58. Partly cloudy overnight down to 40. Partly cloudy early, then clouding up for Friday and a high of 60 degrees. Yes. All right. Big change this weekend, though, so enjoy it while you can. Thank you very much, Christy Lee. Also enjoy the Bob and Tom show called Bob and Tom Tonight, My TV 23 at 1130 tonight. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. Oh, hey, Josh, how are you? Good, how are you? It's good to see you. I'm glad you made it. Did you learn anything last break? Yeah, not to insult you. Yeah, that you write really small. <laughs> um, we have uh, a very tidy, <laughs> a very tidy hand. Yeah. Uh, Let's see now, where was I? Oh, we have to introduce everybody. And uh, Josh is, of course, uh, sitting at the IHateStevenSinger.com sidekick desk and chair. You go through the glass behind there in the smallest room in the building. It's Christy Lee in the Navy Federal Credit Union newsroom. Hi. He's across the way there. Ace Cosby has his own arena. It's the, it's, the, mm. it's, this, it's the joke of the day arena brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Remember, OmahaSteaks.com. More love letters about Omaha Steaks coming. Oh, Kostaki was all over social media. He got his package yesterday. Oh, Kostaki got it? Okay, great. Okay, good. Uh, and I wonder if Al got his. Are we talking to Al today? Yes. Al Jackson? Well, I'm not speaking to him, but you guys. Okay, okay. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> Willie what G is right here. I'm kidding. Uh, there is, uh, Christy, you got some uh, jewelry on today? What is that hanging around your neck there? Yeah. It's is my that... guardian angel pendant. Oh. I need all the help I can get. Uh, no, that, uh, please don't tell me that's got like your dad's ashes or something in it. No, it's just a pendant. It's, it's like just your mom's a metal. ashes. Oh, that's my nice. mom is still alive. I know. I know. That would be really cool, but yeah, <laughs> yeah you have mom's ashes. Yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> Now, now, we're, cigarette, now cigarette we're talking ash. special. <laughs> yeah, there's there's an urn with my mom in it. Oh, I didn't know she died. Oh, she's still alive. Oh, oh, still alive. That's where she's going to go. <laughs> All you we're need just, is a toe. We're, we're just ready. <laughs> right. um, Willie brings up a good point. Hmm. All you need is a toe or a finger or something. You know, in some cultures and some religions, if you have a part of your body removed, you have to save it. Yep. So you can get buried with it. Right. Mm -hmm. well, Put it weird. all together at the that'd end. That'd be weird. Oh, uh, hey, when you defrost the freezer, uh, <laughs> Uncle Bill's toes. <laughs> they're the ones that came off. Yeah, they're, they're in there. We're can we talk about anything else? <laughs> yes. Coming up, uh, Christy, I yes. just edited this, and I... Um, uh, you're going to have to do something very special for me during the next break. Oh, Again? I, 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 you're, it's your turn. I did it Again? last week. I'm not going to watch this time. I'll say it. Yeah, Willie uh, Watts, cool. that was a little weird last it, time. The headline uh, has the word Nicolas Cage in it, the name Nicolas Yes, I saw this story. I saw this, and I'm somewhat intrigued. Yeah. I like yeah, Nicolas don't, Cage. Yeah, don't say anything. Yeah, but I, like, I like him when he's good, Nicolas Cage. How am I going to even well, do Here's this. the thing. I put the last line of the story in yes. italics. Yes, I saw that. You're going to have to go into Dean's room. Oh, and record And read those? that and then have him very carefully... Edit. Beep it. Okay. And by very carefully, Dean, it means I don't want the pho uh and the you-know-what-else at the end. <laughs> you mean the... <laughs> no! <laughs> or the s uh and the j... Or the p and the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you... Uh, Sorry. In any event, that has something to do with, uh, of all people, the actor Nicolas Cage. Did you see the accompanying photograph of Mr. Cage? Yeah. Boy, you think with all the money he makes, he could get a slightly better wig? Poor Nick. Wig, there, huh? Poor Nick. There's There's a wig? Uh, it looks like he... I've was, seen this picture. It looks like he was at a mall and grabbed one off one of the dummies. Oh, really? There's a photo that went viral last week. He was watching... Walking in New York with his son, and he yeah. looked like he was Willy Wonka. He had a big hat and a walking stick. Really? And He's an eccentric guy. Yeah. 
I mean, he looked uh, good, but it was just, you know, a little odd Nick, clothing choice. You know what I'd say if I saw Nicolas Cage and he had a bad wig on? I'd say, hey, man, Conair's awesome. That's that's it. Conair. <laughs> I don't Nicolas care. Pay, get this, a lifetime pass for three movies. No Inc. I love that movie. And yeah, I, good movie. And don't at me. It's a great movie. Uh, and uh, Las Vegas yep. and uh, Con Air. Was it leaving Las Vegas? Yep. Yeah, Whatever. The, yeah. He the, won the, the Academy the, Award. The go-to for balding actors is Sean Connery. If they want you to wear a wig in the movie, go ahead. When you're not in the movie, don't wear it. It's, it's, that, it's that simple. But, but uh, Nick is in the news for some a, a rather interesting television event. That he's got, that he will be hosting. We'll get to that coming up. Uh, I've got to get some of these uh, Christmassy requests coming in, and uh, we've got to get some of these on the air. Okay, now for yeah. sports. sports um, desk. Uh, yesterday we announced, or was it the day before, that the Ohio State Michigan game is canceled for this year due to the pandemic. That in 102 years, uh, world wars, yada yada yada. But wow, canceled this year. But uh, as you remember, the uh, Big Ten conference had a little problem. And now that problem is gone. Ohio State will be able to play for the Big Ten Championship after all. The conference announced last night that it has decided to change its rule. Did they have a conference oh about boy. this? Requiring <laughs> shut-up teams to play. Well, it's important to have a conference conference. Yeah, they, oh. have, they, have, they have the annual conference conference. <laughs> I'm going to say this, and you're going to ask stupid <laughs> questions. You know, uh, Josh, did you ever you should read about the Geneva Convention? Oh, yeah. yeah. Least number of hookers in the history of conventions. I know. Just boring, crappy, a bunch of guys speaking German and There was French. only one hooker, but she was named Geneva. Isn't that interesting? Ironic, yeah. Oh, he's, now he's drinking. Yeah, now I'm having a beer. It's <laughs> the conference announced Wednesday has decided to change the rule requiring teams to play a minimum of six games to qualify for the championship game. Well, obviously, Ohio State hasn't played six games. They only play their 5-0. Oh. So, Big Ten athletic directors met virtually Wednesday night for a regularly scheduled meeting conference. to discuss the change. In a statement, the Big Ten was voting to eliminate the minimum game requirement for participation in the 2020 championship game. So, it It'll be Ohio State and Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship game. And right now, if they played the college football playoffs today, I yeah. love it when they say that. Uh, number one is Alabama. Number two is Notre Dame. Number four, number three is Clemson. Number four, Ohio State. So the games you would have, uh, Alabama and Ohio State and no Notre Dame and Clemson play. Five in the winter, Golden State. <laughs> wrong sport. <laughs> what? <laughs> Golden State? <laughs> you're, 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 you're going 876. I was doing the five golden rings this time of year. And you, get the, you are going one, you, two, You get in the grocery store. I was store. counting. I was giving seeds and you got five golden rings. Because <laughs> it was more interesting than uh, what a bunch of sports writers think. The, who, what, what football team is the best? Play the games, fellas. And that's sports. What? Oh, this is under oh. protest. Oh my God! If you're not, I if you're going to be this first... way, I can't continue. I won't. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Can I continue? Sure. Will you stop? <laughs> Check. I have a line. Is this yeah. funny? Ohio State University is the exception. That's no, right. That's the good. Ohio State. It is a. It is a line. <laughs> I liked it. Wow. I'm glad I said it, wow. Josh. Thanks for the... Now, here is something I hope you'll pay... I would pay want you to be honest with me. I'll be honest with you from now on forward. Here's something I hope you'll pay attention to, Tom. Okay. In Tuesday night's game between the Baltimore Ravens and the Dallas Cowboys, Des Bryant was playing for the Ravens. First time in a couple of years he's even been on an NFL field. He was playing his old team, the Dallas Cowboys. Well, he was looking forward to it. Not so fast. Apparently, Des Bryant was pulled from the field before the Ravens 34-17 win over Dallas. He initially had an inconclusive test for COVID prior oh. to warm -up, warm ups, but an ensuing test during warm ups came up positive and caused him to set out the game. Ensuing? <laughs> now you're doing it. <laughs> Yo, he was at the conference oh, thank yesterday. You. That was stellar, Josh. Thank thank you. He was at the uh, conference conference yesterday. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Alan Sills on site said he made the final determination that there was no high risk close contact during the warm ups from Bryant, so he didn't have to remove anyone else from the game. What did uh, Drs. Crosby and Drs. Nash think? <laughs> well, there was Dr. Sills and Dr. Crosby and Dr. So Nash. Crosby, Sills, and Nash. Crosby, Sills. <laughs> and Dr. Young. Uh -huh. Sometimes Dr. Sometimes Young. Dr. Young. Dr. Young was the one. And sometimes why? He would, he would erase. <laughs> <laughs> I checked out about five Nash minutes and sometimes ago. Young. I'm sorry. Dr. Young would erase everybody else's didn't record. Des Bryant, <laughs> didn't Des Bryant tweet he was quitting football? Yes. And then, uh, like an hour later, said, I'm too smart to quit. But you know what happened? He got no money. <laughs> he had no money. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, you, you can't be in the world with no money. I, I, but didn't he tweet this and then an hour later untweeted or something? Oh, something. Like yeah, there was some Former difference. ABC uh, baseball play-by-play announcer and now Sunday night football announcer finishing all of uh, Chris Collinsworth's sentences, Al Michaels has been voted <laughs> the Ford C. Frick Award for Broadcast yeah, Excellence. 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 <laughs> this is called that is frickin' great. Yeah, this is the frickin' award. <laughs> the frickin' award. <laughs> when I first started running Cincinnati Reds games, uh, Al Michaels was doing the play-by-play, and then Marty Brennan. When you say running one. them, you mean that you were uh, not you weren't in charge of the games. You were just I was in I charge were, of the radio I broadcast. Was at the radio station. I had the Reds on the AM and the notion of a professional the, FM. the notion of a professional sports organization. <laughs> well, we've I'd like to announce our new commissioner, it's Chick McGee. <laughs> I'd love that. Oh, what's wrong with that? You know, in, this, uh, in the Bits and Pieces podcast, this came up. <laughs> that I was I was a music director. Right. I was a program director. Right. You, were, you were a person. I had budgets. <laughs> you, you were had, a person. I had to fire people. <laughs> you I had respect. Sport, I wore sport coats to stupid <laughs> meetings. I yeah. did it all. And what happened? I, which one, it, which, I which, one to, which one do we blame? He joined this stupid, stupid show. You know what happened? <laughs> Tom Griswold saved my life. Would you like to you hear your eulogy? I've got it already. Do you have the urn with my name on generosity, it? Generosity, all I need is a toe. And his foresight, forethought of starting... If the, your eulogy doesn't end with room. you <laughs> knocking over the casket... <laughs> oh, geez, sorry, Tom. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> We're kicking over the ashes. <laughs> right, oh, right. gee, and getting the dustbuster out uh, like Monty Python. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, um, uh, I thought we would play something appropriate then for that. Yes, do something um, else. This I'm tired is, of sports already. This is a uh, this is a request. <laughs> this is. Um, is it Wilco? Anything by Wilco? Wilco. Oh, I haven't great. heard them in a while. We were talking about Wilco off here. Yeah. Looking at the world through a winch. Oh, yeah. okay. Sunvolt, Uncle uh, Tupelo. Uh, no, no, no. This is oh. uh, and Sunvolt. Yeah, that's Sunvolt actually. Uh, this is a. Uh, th- this really has nothing to do with much of anything except for uh, Charlie Brown. Oh, uh, of course the the famous. There's the Halloween special, the Thanksgiving special, the Christmas yes. special, all very famous. I uh, started as a comic strip, you see, uh, Charles. <laughs> Schultz. Boy, you know, in, in newspapers, oh it's not all news. Well, actually, Josh, that's a, that's an Sometimes important. That, that's an cartoon. important point as part of setting up the joke. Uh huh. Um, and the, the setup uh, is everything. It, it was uh, <laughs> in the '60s. It was turned into a, 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 a cartoon talking. with voices. Yes. They had to hire actors. That's and, called TV. And, and that's where this. That's where whoa, things whoa, started going. TV? Walk me through TV. <laughs> this is where things started going wrong. Wrong. There's someone named Pigpen, but it's not a pig; it's a person. Not right? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. or a member of the early Grateful Dead, who no one ever requests a song for. Uh, here we go. Fans of Charlie Brown and the Peanuts Gang were shocked and saddened to learn that voice actor Peter Robbins, who portrayed Charlie, was arrested and sentenced to five years in prison for making criminal threats. Uh-huh. Yeah. Inspired by this story, the Bob and Tom Network presents a brand new Charlie Brown special with a plot ripped right from today's headlines. Everyone's favorite lovable loser, Charlie Brown, is apart from the rest of the Peanuts gang for the first time because Charlie Brown got busted and is doing a nickel upstate. (laughs) Good grief. The cell is really small. My bunk is hard and lumpy. And there's a toilet in the middle of the room. <laughs> and it smells worse here than at Pigpen's house. <laughs> it's the newest and grittiest peanut special ever. Oh, hello. I guess you're my cellmate. Gosh, you must really work out. You've got a lot of muscles. So what are you in for? <laughs> Gee, did the police ever find the hooker's head? <laughs> Oh. Huh? I don't understand. Why would I want to wear lipstick? (laughs) What? Oh, my God! (laughs) It's the new animated television special. You are a prison bitch, Charlie Brown. (laughs) Rats. That hurt way more than landing on my back after trying to kick that football. Uh (laughs) What? You sold me for a pack of cigarettes? (laughs) Good grief. <laughs> You're a prison bitch, Charlie Brown, exclusively on the Bob and Tom Network. Uh, thank you very much. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, Mr. Spangle, who's uh, prominently featured in yes. that as Charlie Brown, uh, no longer allowed in the building due to COVID restrictions, and I bet he's really glad. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we came up with? <laughs> Is it, I, don't, I don't get pulled aside anymore for that sort of thing. Um, a, a, couple, a couple more Christmassy things? Would you like to get in the, sure. the Christmas? Oh, yeah. 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 The holiday spirit? Uh, here's a good one uh, from uh, Bernie Lubbers. Santa went to Rudolph. Yes, he did. He didn't like the way his nose lit up all red. He said, now get on out of here. He left Christmas town behind him, one sad little deer. Turns out Santa Claus is just a giant dick. He told Rudolph, pack your bags and hit the bricks. No matter what the story says about this elf they call Nick. He ain't jolly, he's not a saint, he's just a dick. <laughs> Rudolph roamed around, it seemed for months on end. Ran into Hermie and Cornelius, they all became friends. He said, he hates us too, you know. <laughs> Threw us both out in the snow. And told Clarice's mom, your daughter's a ho-ho-ho. <laughs> Turns out Santa Claus is just a giant dick. He told Rudolph, pack your bags and hit the bricks. <laughs> no matter what the story says about this elf they call Nick. He ain't jolly, he's not a saint, he's just a dick. <laughs> yeah, All right. All right. That was uh, live in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, mm -hmm. downtown Louisville, in the special Bourbon Museum, with uh, with uh, with uh, Bernie Lovers. Yes, sir. I remember. So, in, in, when you listen to that song, you can hear somebody say, "Everybody." Everybody. Well, I believe that was a callback that morning because Godwin had introduced a <laughs> yes. new song to us all. Yes, <laughs> brand new, brand new song. And he got one line in, and he goes, "Everybody," <laughs> <laughs> and he was serious, and we all had no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And did you oh, watch so good. Did you watch Rudolph this year? On no, I didn't. I did. Remember when Santa's kind? Of, Santa is kind of a jerk. Oh, Bernie nails it. Yeah, yeah he, he really is. He looks at Rudolph. Oh, oh Santa. Yeah, oh, uh, oh, oh, Rudolph. We have a couple That's more a tributes. Shame. In oh, fact, uh, 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 Bernie uh, from uh, the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Shall we move briefly? To the great state of Oklahoma, I think we should. And who's from there? It's, it's Mr. Rodney Carrington. I think people forget about the true meaning of Christmas. Love, friendship, and spending time with the family. Mama would be inside, fixing turkey and dressing, and me and my brothers used to play outside in the snow for hours, throwing snowballs, and I'll never forget my daddy coming outside and saying, Hey! Who put the on the snowman? <laughs> Andy Barris, the family. You could have used a ball Cucumber or a zucchini <laughs> But instead you used a thimble Something you could barely see I put that on the snowman And made him look like me You boys been talking to your mama I got your Christmas present right here, you little bastard I'm gonna Thank beat you. your ass uh, a, little, a little bit of Rodney Carrington featuring the Bob and Tom Band and Orchestra. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rodney. Uh, coming up, we have this in the news. Well, this is Christy. Again? It's, it's a fight song. They call me uh, Mr. Football, right? Mr. Touchdown. Mr. Touchdown. Mr. Touchdown. Mr. Touchdown. Oh. Come on. Isn't it some school's fight song? No, it's Mr. Touchdown. It's oh. every school's. Not well, every school. Most schools. I, yeah, schools in the perhaps, 30s. Used perhaps to play the it. college. Okay. I would never scored a touchdown, <laughs> but I'm sure they had their More days. sports coming up, including uh, Goldfish, Sardines, Darius Rucker. Uh, the Rose Parade has been canceled, of course, but don't worry. Um, Hack Entertainment will be available. <laughs> okay. Have you ever had a sardine, Josh? Yeah, uh huh. I have I, some in my pantry right now. You're, you're kidding me. I read an article uh, lately or recently that said uh, everybody should be eating sardines. Why? Okay. Have you ever it's had really one good really? for your brain? I don't the think oil so. and That's uh, cool. the oil. Yeah. yeah, I'm not even sure I've ever even seen one. It's just can one I just take a fish oil and be done with it? Do I have to eat them? Uh, I guess. Yeah. Can I have just have a filet of fish at McDonald's? Oh, oh now we're talking. No, that's oh, fish. That is good. I want to remind you that um, there's a lot of stress when you hear those words, some assembly required, usually written in very small type, right next to where it says batteries not 
ink. Mm. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. Then you find out it's the battery that you go to the CVS store and it's the only one missing in the rack. Oh, you want the GB1745? <laughs> Unless the size of a dime is only available if you live in Japan. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, Napa's yeah. here to help our friends at Napa. This is unbelievable. The Evercraft 100-piece screwdriver set. $19.99. I'm going to get one of these for myself because I'm always a screwdriver short, if not a screw loose or, a, you know, sort. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so no matter what sad or the elves leave for you to put together, you'll be prepared to put uh, the, uh, the some assembly required things together if you've got the right kind of screwdrivers. This is amazing. Nap is the place to save on the Evercraft 100-piece screwdriver set. Did I mention it's nineteen ninety nine? That's impossible. They got other great tools too. Napa, they've got Napa know how. You'll find this at participating locations while supplies last. This offer ends New Year's Eve, twenty twenty. Check it out from our friends at Napa. Coming up, sardines, Nicolas Cage, and uh, <clears throat> this sounds like it's right out of a James Bond movie. There really is something in Russia called the Doomsday Plane. Oh no! And there's trouble with the Doomsday. Plane. Oh. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. You can find us on Twitter at Bob and Tom, or you can email us at Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just ruined it. <laughs> hey, everybody. Mark Allison. It is Thursday, December 10th, 2020. You're listening to the Bob and Tom Show on Bob and Tom 24-7. Got a great show for you today. Our West Coast Mountain correspondent, Al Jackson, will be Zooming in. When you don't hear Al on our show, he's on the daytime talk show Daily Blast Live, perhaps seen in your market. Check it out on the TV. Also, he's an author of a children's book, Where Is Baby Ford? Available at aljacksonlive.com. Portions of the proceeds benefit the Firefly Autism School in Lakewood, Colorado. Very cool, Al Jackson, not just a comedian, not just a friend of the show, a children's author. How about that? Also, the world's foremost authority on celebrity nudity, Mr. Skin, on the way as well on a Thursday, right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom Sports Update. The NFL's medical director says all protocols were followed when the Ravens wide receiver Des Bryant pulled from the field before the 34-17 win over Dallas on Tuesday night. Bryant initially had an inconclusive test for COVID prior to warm-ups, but an ensuing test came up positive and caused him to set out a game against his former teammate. 
Dr. Sills said he made the final determination that there were no high-risk close contacts to the case, so there was no need to remove any other player. Former ABC baseball play-by-play announcer and now NFL Sunday Night Football announcer Al Michaels has been voted the Ford C. Frick Award for Broadcast Excellence by the Baseball Hall of Fame. And in college basketball last night, Michigan State at Virginia, Sam Houston at Houston, Robert Morris at West Virginia, UT Martin at Tennessee, and Louisville at Wisconsin all postponed or canceled. In games that were played, Baylor, Wisconsin, Texas, Texas Tech, Richmond, and Florida State all win. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Wild giant pandas oh, roll wild. around in horse manure to help keep warm. Now, you roll and poop just to mask the B.O., right, Josh? Uh, that's right. My body odor is so offensive, I roll in feces. Why is your body odor so offensive, Josh? Well, I eat them. Yeah. If one is fat, they sweat. Yeah. And they often don't bathe because it's physically difficult. <laughs> that's right. I can barely fit in my home let alone my tub. I have to go out in the backyard where a team of men with <laughs> giant brushes on sticks scrub me down my like fun. a circus elephant. Oh, that's what Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. This is Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. His name is Apollo Johnson, and he's America's number one astronaut. But he's also a well-endowed ladies' man. Monumental Pictures proudly presents Apollo 13 and a half. Oh, Apollo, your rocket is so big. Oh. Adult film star Dick Mahogany in his first starring role since Shaft's lethal weapon is astronaut Apollo Johnson. And when he's not orbiting the Earth, he's going around the world. <laughs> Apollo Johnson, he's not just an astronaut, he's a charter member of the 100,000 Mile High Club. And believe me, there's nothing weightless about Apollo 13 and a half. Oh, Apollo, now I know why they call it the Johnson Space Center. He's Apollo Johnson, and not even the shuttle can hold all of his cargo. Look at that load. Apollo 13 and a half from Monumental Pictures, rated PG-13. 646, Q95, it's the Bob and Tom Show. God, I wish I'd been there when Gunner recorded that. <laughs> Bet you do. He did it, he did it, he was I hanging was on. the exact yeah, same thing. He's on the phone with a friend. Uh, I took French in high school. <laughs> he almost sounded like he was falling backwards. You know? uh, that sounds like fun at Twin Peaks. Uh, let's see, oh, can't segue that way. Let me, how can I get, how can I get out of this? Hey, uh, how about our weather forecast? There you go. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, from the Car X, man, we'll see sunshine nearly 60 today. 58 for the high. Currently clear skies, 29 degrees. Going to be a beautiful day. 60 today? Near 60. Wow. 50, yeah. Okay, thank you, Christy. Uh, some great lights when it's dark at the state fairgrounds. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. All right, tap your foot, especially if it's on the accelerator. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, officer. Tom made me do it. What a stupid idiot he is. You're telling me? Wait a minute, that's me talking. There's Ice Cosby, our engineer. Ace, uh, the man in black today, black cap, black shirt, zip up a gift pants on today's Ace? I think so. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> you mean you hope so? I don't want him to walk around here pantless, do Why you? Not? Sure, uh, it'd be funny. I hope so. Can you imagine? I'd get, I'd get carpet burned. Oh, 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 very good, Ace. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Our show now in stereo type. Drag, drag, drag. Uh, let's see, where was I? Oh, Chip McGee's over there. I can see him from here. Uh, Josh, uh, I can see Josh. I see uh, I see Christy Lee in the Navy Federal Credit Union newsroom. Yes, she has, sir. She has her own room. There's Willie G. I'd get rug burns. Who bought that? Anybody? <laughs> Any, anybody believe that? No? <laughs> uh, let's see, where were we? Uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, fun stuff coming up in the world of, um, of uh, requests. But first, Chick McGee is at the... Uh, is, is it the sports desk with more sports? There won't be thousands of people watching flower-laden floats roll through the streets of Pasadena on New Year's Day for the Rose Parade. That has been canceled, but the what? show will go on. Oh. 
Sheryl Crow leads a long list of performers and celebrity guests who will appear on January 1st TV special. Well, I wonder how they got her to do it. What's your problem with this? <laughs> because she answers the I phone. I Sheryl yeah, Crow. Yeah, I know. 132nd uh, row She's great. Right. I love her, too. She's fantastic. This, I right, thought they pulled... Didn't they pull it off with nice for the you. Macy's Parade in oh. New York? It was a fun no, TV event. Had, Are you crazy? You're out of your mind. <laughs> that was awful. You didn't watch it. You're I just thought they. Nice. I I kind of thought they pulled it off too. And uh, I. I mean, I hated all, every musical. I number. didn't like it at all. I was not the same. They, I, I laughed out loud. Okay. Legitimately, like t three times at different musical numbers, and I'm telling you, the more I see of Hamilton. The more I don't give a crap. <laughs> <laughs> they it's, came out and did some song about two sisters. Who gives a I couldn't sisters. stand yeah. it. My little sisters were the Skyler I'm sisters. I'm telling you, if when I yeah, see my this, girls it's it's for Halloween dressed as the Skyler sisters. Oh, boy. oh, so maybe two gay dudes in the city <laughs> knew who they were? Why'd they do that? Josh, it's massively popular. It's I I this has to be the most overrated thing of the last it's, it's, hundred it, years. I am not a hip hop guy, and I really enjoyed it. I'm with you, Josh. I haven't seen it. Don't care to. Oh, uh, okay. Neither do my girls. I've they seen it. I love it. I'll watch it again. Yeah, I really enjoy it. I want to be in the room where it happens, chick. Yep, me too. I saw it live in London. Thank you. Oh, and I whoa. saw it on my TV. Yeah. And then they had a, a thing from the Alanis Morissette musical where they oh. were singing to each other earnestly, uh. and it was. It was, oh, was it the part where they cut her, her head off? I love that. <laughs> well, I love. I love. See, now, going, why can't I, I love Jack? Jack. I love cool. Alanis. I don't care for Sheryl Crow. Am oh, I wrong? I love them both. They are were they, both the soundtrack of my 95. <laughs> are, they, are they doing an Alanis Morissette Broadway show? They did, yeah. yeah they yeah. did. Wait, okay, David Byrne has had one. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen has had one. Alanis Morissette on Broadway? And it was like a family... Like, uh, sat, and they were, like, singing to each other. I couldn't take it. That's great. <laughs> but at least they're they're trying to do something. Right. Right. <laughs> they're, they're making an effort. Yeah. I think okay. that uh, to bring the Rose Parade to some degree alive, and yeah. I think Cheryl Crow is great. Oh, I think I, she's I do fine. I, do I like Cheryl Crow. I'm, I'm just saying she's doing, not I I top of mind. She hasn't really done much lately. I haven't well, gotten no anyone one they can't. but Cheryl Crow. I don't think, uh, no, there's, well... It's just Cheryl Crow is the only one mentioned here because probably the rest of the acts are the the naked cowboy and uh, <laughs> Al Roker doing some thoughts on uh, <laughs> what do you his prostate. That? Actually, and, no, they booked me for the Rose Bowl. I'm going to give my fantasy football advice for the Rose Bowl. Oh, nice. Fun. Yeah, I'm doing doing a whole hour and a half. Uh, this um, this entertainment. Did yeah. You the, did you hear the quotes in my voice? Mm -hmm. It'll be on ABC, NBC, the Hallmark Channel, Univision, RFD TV, and KTLA Los Angeles. The organizi organizers say performances filmed at locations around the country to limit travel and ensure safety. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. So that means Cheryl Crow's going to be in her basement. Well, look at this. They, they got uh, Tori Kelly, Lady A, Rascal Flats. Yep. There was only reason enough to mention Cheryl Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that I thought it was? Oh, bad. Tom, look at this! So, look, two in a row. Actually, three. You're you're gonna watch, Tom. Listen, celebrity guests will include Rita Moreno, big fan, Emeril Lagasse. Oh yeah, I love. What's him. he gonna do? Bam. Gary Sinise, the great actor. Vin Scully. Wait a minute, oh. Gary Sinise. What, what is these Gary guys gonna Sinise do? Sinise gonna do? And Rose Bowl Hall of Fame inductee Matt Leinert. Matt Leinert? Yes. The quarterback from the USC from... team with Reggie Bush, Matt Leinert? <laughs> USC? What? Well, he must what be in the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. Is his dad that on is... the committee? How did he... What? And then, that is... uh, about... hey, wait a minute. They left, they left somebody out. Talk about Damn. random. Who's... So, okay, and O.J. Simpson will be the... Oh, yeah. O.J. Uh... Simpson. Grand Marshal? Is that what you're going to Well, say? he's going to cut the ribbon before the parade or whatever. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> with a big, big Ooh. knife. Who's Daddy Yankee? Oh, uh, no Daddy... idea. Daddy Yankee, I believe, is a hip hop artist. <laughs> Daddy well, Yankee, I'm not certain. I want to say it's a Puerto Rican hip hop artist, but I'm not certain. Now I feel weird for saying Puerto Rican like that. Daddy as were as will Olympic gymnast Lori Hernandez. Oh, of course. Well, well. Like and now, ladies and gentlemen, Mary Lou Retton. Okay, what? Hey. Whatever. Whatever. I, again, uh, we <laughs> have to do things. We can't just stop. Can you imagine the world. being in the pitch meeting? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get Cheryl Crow and. 
others. And we're gonna. <laughs> What's Yankee's last name? Because I type Yankee and I get Daddy it. Yankee. Yeah, no, he is a I, Puerto I, Rican I, singer, songwriter, rapper, actor, and record producer. So I swear to God, I got Yankee Doodle Dandy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I demand to know what Gary Sinise is going to do during the Rose Parade. Me too. Uh, show going, show he, people he has two legs. He, he's oh. going to come out and he's going to. He's a. He's huge with the military. He's going to do a celebration about our men and women fighting it's overseas. Great. And okay. to feel better about yourself. And a scene for mice and men. Is that what he's going to? He did a fine version with John Malkovich. <laughs> but they couldn't get Malkovich, so he's going to be talking to an empty chair. That's the way we staged it. He's done more for this world than you ever oh will. I beg your pardon. I make, I make people kind of smile every morning. <laughs> My God. <laughs> they go, hey, I love that guy, Chuck McGee. He's yeah, my right. favorite. Sometimes it's a full-blown smirk. When I hear him, I save electricity by turning the radio off. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, my boy. part for this, uh, the ecosystem. Um, and more sports <laughs> coming up. More And all about fish coming up. Fish, 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 fish. Okay. And a okay. sardine lesson. I got all the information on sardines. And, oh, uh, by the way, it doesn't what? make the news that often, but Mount, Mount Everest. Yeah. yeah. Not people on it. Just the, the mountain. The actual mountain. Yes, Making sir. news. And there is a doomsday plane in Russia. And it's the doomsday machine. There's a problem with it. We'll find out what that is. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Everything about the show is at bobandtom.com. Check it out now. State law. Everybody, this is Mark Sweeney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, like Santa, this comes but once a year. What are you talking about, Mark? Well, Bob and Tom's Christmas comedy cuts played all season long. Now till Christmas night, we'll be laughing all the way. It's a wonderful laugh all this holiday season right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. And stay tuned. We'll have more of the Bob and Tom show coming up. Al Jackson and celebrity nudity expert Mr. Skin on the way. I'm Mark Allison from the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk with a Bob and Tom News update. Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine faces one final hurdle before an expected decision to greenlight the shot for use in millions of Americans. Food and Drug Administration advisors meet today to scrutinize the company's data for any red flags or oversights. The public review comes as U.K. regulators investigate 
two apparent cases of allergic reaction to that vaccine. Safety, the top of mind for the panel of medical experts who will vote on whether to endorse the vaccine. They'll also address unknowns about the vaccine's effectiveness in certain groups. A final FDA decision and the first shots could follow within days. Lawmakers embracing a one-week extension of government funding to buy time for more COVID-19 relief talks. The House on Wednesday easily passed a temporary funding bill that sets a December 18th deadline for Congress to wrap up both a virus relief measure and a $1.4 trillion government spending bill. The Senate expected easily pass the bill before midnight Friday to avert a partial government shutdown. Meanwhile, meanwhile, negotiations continue over another round of virus aid. Haven't we heard this before? Leaders in agreement about helping small businesses and preserving extra unemployment benefits, but disagree over the details of the package. Just get it done. The Justice Department investigating the finances of President-elect Joe Biden's son, including scrutinizing some of his Chinese business dealings and other transactions, according to a person familiar with the matter who spoke to the AP Wednesday. Revelations put a renewed spotlight on questions about Hunter Biden's financial history, which dogged his father's successful White House campaign and were a frequent target of Donald Trump and his allies. They also come at a politically delicate time for the president-elect, who's weighing his choice to lead an agency that is actively investigating his son. 2020, everyone, catch it. That's your news update. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> You're so weird. You have no idea. Essential Morning Radio. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7, 24-7. Morning, Bob and Tom Show. Yes, uh, if I could just have a few minutes of your time, I'd like to speak with you today about the joys of water sports. <laughs> is this Bob and or Tom? This is, uh, yeah, this is Bob. Yeah, uh, perhaps you already own a boat. However, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to upgrade your boat. Shut with- up, Randy. Read the script I wrote. <laughs> 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 okay? Upgrade boats. I want them to buy one. I almost got them, Donnie. Okay, okay. Uh, so- <laughs> The badass wave buster, uh, best beast on the water. And tell Checky looks thinner, and he'll buy it. Get a free tube if you're not a lard queen or like pork. I ain't even gave my pager number, man. Donnie, all right, I'm not going to do this anymore, Donnie. Get back to work, Randy. You oh. screwed it up anyway. <laughs> Bob and Tom. Lock on the nose Q95. It's the Bob and Tom Show. The forecast is quick and good, and it's Christie's. Q95 Fox 59 weather brought to you by Car X. Sunny 58, partly cloudy, then clouding up in the afternoon tomorrow. High near 60, 29 now. 29 line, 29 of this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, he definitely helped me, and I'm sure he can help you too. Red Tom from a piece of paper without wearing glasses. Well, thank you, Dr. Lanter. <laughs> Dr. Lanter is my eye guy, and Dr. Lanter is also a Aces and Chicks Eye Guy. Ace and I both have what they call multifocal lenses actually surgically implanted inside our eyes. I haven't had to wear reading glasses for how many years has this been, Ace? Like 10 years? And you got rid of my cataracts. You got rid of your cataracts? Very good. And uh, Mr. McGee, you had the LASIK surgery from Dr. Lanter. Distance vision correction, Tom. I'm 2020. This would be a great present. Here's my idea. You get a piece of paper and then you print it so it's all fuzzy and you hand it to her and go, oh, it's a shame you can't read. You go, oh. But maybe if you go to Dr. Lanter... Oh, that sounds lovely. Hey, yeah. listen, fear is the best gift. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Dr. Lanter is the man. Thank you, Earl. You'll find him at oh, uh, Lanter my. Eye Care on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's Lanter Eye Care, L-A-N-T-E-R. Dr. Lanter is my eye guy. Let's see. This is the Bob and Tom Show. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. Today, the 10th of December, 2020. It's almost over. But, unfortunately, when the ball falls down in times, in an empty Times Square, yes. it won't be over for a while. Uh, got a William Shakespeare update coming up. Uh, we'll get back to Chick McGee at the sports desk. Okie doke. Uh, Josh Arnold, I can see him. He's, of course, sitting at the I Hate Stephen Singer.com sidekick chair, reminding you that uh, can't go wrong with jewelry, fellas. Stephen Singer. 
Christie.com. Now, where was I? Oh, there's Christy and there's Willie G. And Hi. Uh, once again, this is Tom speaking. Okay, Darius Rucker has joined the effort to bring a Major League Baseball team to Nashville. Rucker says oh. he's always been a big base- baseball fan. Uh, Rucker will be an advisor to Music City Baseball, trying to launch a team called the Nashville Stars. Oh, I just ordered a hat from the Nashville Stars. Huh. That name is a nod to a Negro League team that ended in the early 1950s. Justin Timberlake, Luke Combs, Kicks Brooks, Marin Morris, Ryan Hurd, Larry Gatlin, Mickey Guyton, and Kane Brown are also... All on the advisory board. Cool. Wow. So I hope they do go. a concert at the wow. advisory board. Yeah, I would love to see that. <laughs> Sounds like just rocks. a matter of time, everybody. That's exciting. And his uh, Darius Rucker's business partner, Ted Reaver, is also <laughs> part of this. Huh? Oh, of the firm <laughs> Rucker and Reaver? Yeah, yeah. I had heard that. Yeah. Rucker. They have offices in uh, Chinatown, right? Don't they? Oh, boy. Well, yeah. yeah. In Nashville. Uh. <laughs> Nashville is uh, 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 small, but thriving Chinatown. Yeah, yeah. Very, very yeah. Very hot General Tso's chicken. Okay. Oh, uh, do, do, do you pronounce the T in General Tso? No, it's... Oh, I like the way you just did it, though. To Tso? So? General Tso. So. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm you you kind of gay it up a little bit. I'm not, <laughs> from now General on, I'm doing so. that. Is that what you did? Gay it up. <laughs> That's how I've you heard say General that? Chow. Okay. What? I think he meant add joy to it. Yeah. General Chow. How do you get Chow out of So? Wait a second. I got a letter for Josh. Uh, well, yeah, let's read it then. Well, I'd like to hear it, right? Uh, well, first of all, Christy, I don't know if you remember the story from yesterday. Uh, of course I do. Talking about the, in the UK, they were the first, they had, they, they've approved whichever one of the COVID. Uh, the va- Pfizer one. Vaccine it is. Yes. So they were, they were actually the Pfizer. Ad, 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 admin- the Pfizer. administering it. Correct, Josh. A couple days ago. <laughs> and of course they, they, they filmed the first people to get it. And the second person was a man by the name of William Shakespeare. And this guy's. Billy Shakes. This guy's parents. Curse them, named this guy eighty-one years ago. They Maybe he liked it. I uh, can you imagine how? Did old they call that him Billy? Seriously. Billy Shakespeare? <laughs> I don't know. They could have named him like Rosencrantz or Guildenstern. Yeah. 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 There's many things they could have done wrong. Hey he, Romeo, get over here. And he got tired of it. Did you know this? No, Mister. Yeah, he changed his name, uh, his last name, to Shatner, so people wouldn't. <laughs> William Shatner. No, he um, he. Uh, he was the second guy to get the injection at the University Hospital in Coventry, 20 miles from the birthplace yes. right. of William Shakespeare. The news, uh, according to this news account, several headlines included the taming of the flu. <laughs> get it? Well, uh, yeah, we get True it. <laughs> gentlemen of Corona. This all sounds like something you do. I love this just, stuff. Of course. Just <laughs> gleefully. Yeah. And a the, fellow MG. There's a lot of things you can do. The yeah. first patient was a, an uh, elderly one by the name of Margaret Keenan. And someone asked, if she is patient 1A, was Mr. Shakespeare patient 2B or not 2B? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These are all excellent. Um, but uh, <laughs> we, we have a letter here. Yeah. That, I, that uh, is... Uh, Dear Josh. Yes. I'm surprised that Mr. William Shakespeare would have gone for the COVID injection as opposed to the nasal spray. Mm Mm-hmm. Ready, Josh? Yes. You're going to have to explain this to everybody. (laughs) I figured he would be a, quote, no holes barred, B-A-R-D, no holes barred type of person. Ah, B-A-R-D, yes. Yeah, of course. You get that one? Yes, of course. Well, everybody. he's the great bard, but the bard, bard being uh, one who uh, writes, essentially, one who writes prose. Yeah, but didn't everyone have that English teacher that always wore the uh, the dicky and he'd walk in? <laughs> Today, class, we read the bard. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, oh, dear God, can we have a fire drill? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Wow. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Jim. No holes barred. Very good. Uh, okay, there. Thank you, sir. We per- certainly appreciate that letter. Uh, now we go back to uh, Chick McGee at the sports. Stupid station. world, world records. Record. <laughs> Let's see. This is uh, Dateline yesterday. Uh, the Jingle Johns are back this year. The singing porta potties brought to you by Indiana's Surface Sanitation <laughs> Company. The Jingle Johns. The Jingle have set a world record while saying hallelujah to the end of 220. Fuse, <laughs> they say, fusing together the elements of lights, music, and porta potties. The Jingle Johns have officially set a world record for the most animated faces on a single holiday light display. <laughs> hmm. This I Gary Indiana. Lost. What does this, this have to do with 
portable toilet. No, it's a world record. They're oh, on so, the front yeah. of the portable toilet. So the lights, pro- the the faces project. They're on the, the toilet. They have the they have the porta potties lit up with faces, and they are <laughs> animated, and they sing. <laughs> oh, it's like a laser show. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but they're. Oh no, those are actually lights. Yeah, yeah they're not projected on. No, they're, they're yeah. lights. They're all the the. John's the porta potties are hooked up with electricity and they have faces on them. Can you use them? I I Hmm. think I have the same question. Yes, I'm going to say yes. The unique Christmas choir has been an ongoing tradition since 2013. Do they have their own their own special mascot, Chris Crapper, (laughs) Chris Chris Kringles, less well known step brother. (laughs) The Jingle Johns uh, for Christmas. uh, The the singing porta potties though are famous. They have rapped to Snoop Dogg, cheered on the Cubs, and competed in a lip sync battle. Uh, They're they're talking about a continuous innovation and achieving a near wow factor each and every year. Hmm. They set a record. That's great. Mildly Where amazing. did you find this? Four of the porta potties dubbed. <laughs> and why? Oh, you love Don't this story you just dare. because you okay, didn't find it. Okay, this has like because he yeah. didn't see it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. This no, has no. like exactly. ten things he loves. <laughs> okay. Now here's here's all one of this. No, no. First of all, the Dateline is uh, oddly enough a place, not a time. December 9th, two thousand twenty. That's not the Dateline. Uh, I will tell you right now. There's the Dateline. No, but December ninth says Dateline. Then it'll say like Beirut. It's a journalistic tradition. You know what I'm talking about, John. Gary, Indiana. Well, it is. <laughs> okay, here's a t- here's a here's a story Tom likes. Here's a, here's a world yes, world record. Let's Tom compare, likes. And yes, compare and contrast. Yes, compare and contrast. Well, that one was confusing. I didn't know where it was taking place. He uh, said, "Gary, uh, Indiana. Gary, Indiana, you're lying. You, weren't said, you listening. just faces weren't on listening. porta potties. You just don't listen. They're animated. Now we'll do this story tomorrow. Oh yeah, and it'll we will. be brand new and wonderful. Yeah, sure will. <laughs> now here's one Tom chose: a Filipino food brand to set a Guinness World Record by creating the world's tallest tin can structure. <laughs> now, there's not nearly as good. How tall no. is it? Stupid. It's, it's not, a fair question, but you, you got faces now. on Porta on Jingle Johns, but you. Oh, God, you're infuriating. Do you, see, do you want to see this picture, Josh? No. It's a no, huge Christmas it. tree made of stacked cans. Josh, what do you want to see? Oh, is that? No, I don't care. Josh, do you know my joke about uh, tin cans? No, I don't. I do it right at the beginning of my act. It's my can opener, and it works. Oh, right. it does, does yeah. it? Yeah. Works real good. Oh, you got any more on the toilet? Here are the Jingle Johns <laughs> singing. Here are the Jingle Johns in action. This has actually been, I mean, I can't believe you didn't see this, Tom. It's all over the news. New York Post. I mean, it's not uh, like we made this up. Newswire. International yeah. Newswire, the Jingle Johns, yeah. December 9th, 2020. Well, what about these cans now? <laughs> I like the singing cans. <laughs> uh, that's a can. Yeah, they are cans. Aren't the they Mega cans? Global Corporation of that's the, Phil- oh, see, of does, the doesn't Philippines. That, doesn't it feel like you're watching <laughs> watching a James Bond film? Yes. Yes, uh, Spectre. Uh, you know, the, they they were awarded the, the title for their Christmas tree made from over 70,000 <laughs> sardine cans. Mega Global Corporation. It sounds like it's a joke. Yes, it, does. it does. The total structure measures. 19 feet, four and a half inches high, and weighed over 30,000 pounds. All the cans used in the record breaking structure will be no- donated to charity. So they've got red sure and green will. sardine cans, Christy, and, yep. they've, and they've stacked them almost 20 feet high to make a Christmas tree. Lovely. <laughs> I think it's I don't want to hear about the porta. You know, let's start a poll. Would you rather see the tin cans or I the singing so. porta? Which would you? Well, no. <laughs> uh, it, it was 100% the tin cans, but we polled cats. <laughs> <laughs> Which would you rather drive to see? Get the ca- kids in the car to go see singing j- uh, porta potties or the tree made out of sardine cans? Oh, and again, I. And are sardines not a fish? I thought they were a fish. I have never eaten a sardine. I've, it's one of those things you hear about all your life. Hey, they're packed in like sardines. I've never right. even seen a can of sardines opened. Oh, really? No, I just. Do they still have that little thing that you twist, Josh? That no, they're more like pull tabish now. Oh, oh, I love. Yeah, the they didn't have the, the key. The key? Yeah, I mean, there's still maybe some with keys out there, but the sardines I buy, which are very good, by the way, and um, oh, quite what pricey. Do you, what do you put oh, sardines in? I put them on a saltine. Or, you, do you eat uh, the face and the tail and everything? Uh, they kind of they're 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 actually surprisingly mushy. Ugh. Um, Ugh. So, but uh, it's brain food. It's okay. one of the reasons I'm I, I'm so smart. Um, There's no such thing as an actual sardine. Oh there boy. are 21 oh, different brainish. <laughs> there are 21 different 
uh, varieties of fish that go into making a sardine. Right. But they are like little fish. They're not like smashed together like they didn't put out of uh, fish uh, parts. uh, Sardinia, (laughs) which is where they get Sardinia. Sardines. Sardinia is a place. Yeah, that's where they uh, they come from. That's where they get the fish. I Uh, know. Did you say that? Yes, because I eat sardines and I know these. You things. were talking Wait. about. I didn't hear you say sardines. Is Sardinia a real place? Yes. Yeah, I thought that was from a Groucho Marx movie. No, it's a real place. <laughs> oh, wow. And it's an excellent source of vitamin B twelve. <laughs> Otis J Flywheel from yeah, Sardinia. Yeah. I thought Sardinia was where they were in duck soup. That's where I thought it was. Yeah. That's Fredonia is what that is. Okay. Uh, very good. That is Fredonia. I'm no. against it. <laughs> uh, coming up. Uh, We've learned we a have, lot today. Uh, we have a little bit of Don, Donnie Baker. We have some Mount Everest in the news. I can't believe we're NASA. arguing over singing Porta Johns <laughs> or <laughs> sardine cans. What's happened to us? What has happened, Tom? I only gave you that story because I, I couldn't get over the fact that there's a company called the Mega Global Corporation. <laughs> it is so funny. I mean, it sounds like something they'd put in South Park. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it know. sounds like the bad guys in Good Burger, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where does Dr. No work? It sounds you like a dog me? trying to get a job hit like disguised as a human. I worked for Mega Global Corporation. <laughs> Amalgamated. Uh, thank you. Yes, I, I do like this overcoat. <laughs> uh, okay, but it's a good thing they're donating all that uh, food to charity very yes good. speaking of food oh look at this we have food a letter me. food me uh dear bob and tom show i got off work came home sitting on the porch what was there a gigantic box of omaha steaks mm. from my mother and sister-in-law very oh. cool oh, that's really great i got the steak i got the burgers I got the chicken. I got so much food. I don't have to go to the grocery store until Christmas Day. Thank you, Omaha Steaks. You're great. Just got that text message. Nice. Omaha Steaks isn't just steak. It's a guaranteed fantastic gift. And uh, I'll be very uh, uh, uncomplicated here. The box arrives. Yeah. What's the box made of, Josh? It's a cooler. A it's a cool thing. Yeah. Styrofoam. Right. Uh-huh. And uh, inside you find a bunch of uh, great uh, frozen hot dogs and steaks and chicken. Depending on which one you get, I recommend the Deluxe Grillers Assortment. Did I say assortment? You did. I meant the Deluxe Grillers Assortment featuring butcher's cut filet mignons. Oh, this is so good. And Josh, tell me more about what I'm going to get when I go to omahasteaks.com and type BTS in the search bar. All kinds of things. They have that vast variety of entrees, sides, desserts, and right now you can get the Deluxe Grillers Assortment Package plus four free burgers and a free digital meat thermometer at an exclusive price available only to Bob and Tom Show listeners. Go to omahasteaks.com today. What are you waiting for? Enter the code BTS into the search bar. So delicious, and uh, the gr- the greatest gift to send someone who lives halfway across the country or all the way across the country. Well, I was going to get you a box of mystery candies, you know, the ones you bite in. And every fourth one has coconut in it, and you spit it out. Or I could get you steaks. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. The perfect gift. OmahaSteaks.com. The code is BTS in the search bar. Shop for the best gourmet gifts of the season. They got a whole bunch of different packages. See the one you like. Make sure to tell them the Bob and Tom Show sent you. OmahaSteaks.com. I would do it right now. So it, uh, the, the shipping start. Uh, Kostaki. Yes. Uh, he got the ones I sent him. He Boy, got them yesterday. He, yeah, he did. He put them all over social media. There's a stack of boxes. It oh, looks nice. so great. And we'll see if uh, we'll see if um, we talked to Al Jackson. We'll see if Al's arrived yet. OmahaSteaks.com. It's a great gift. BTS in the search bar, please. Coming up, Donnie. Baker and uh, a deer caught in the headlights, really, and uh, a very fat goldfish. This is the Bob and Tom Show. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Essential Morning Radio. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. Oh, yes, we're here on a Thursday. I'm Mark Allison. Hope you're having a great morning. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Bob and Tom Show. Make sure you bookmark this now, bobandtom.com forward slash live. Starting Monday, January 4th, this will be the new location of the Bob and Tom live video feed that you watch each and every morning. Again, bobandtom.com forward slash live. You'll be able to watch the show. It'll be free. It'll be right there for you. And you're welcome. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. 
Good morning. I'm Mark Allison with your Bob and Tom Entertainment News from the Navy Federal Credit Union Entertainment News Desk. The names of America's preeminent infectious disease expert and its incoming vice president have topped this year's list of most mispronounced words. Anthony Fauci and Kamala Harris are among a number of famous names that made the list released Wednesday. The U.S. captioning company, which captions and subtitles real-time events on TV and in courtrooms, has been compiling the list with Babbel, a language learning app company since 2016 Todd Ezrin a singer easy for me to say Todd Ezrin a senior linguist at Babel said the list unsurprisingly reflects a year dominated by presidential politics and the coronavirus pandemic Police in South Florida descended on what they thought was an armed break-in at a men's clothing store Tuesday morning after people were spotted storming in with rifles but arrived to find a music video in process of filming. A Pembroke Pines police spokeswoman says the rifles were fake, the men holding them actors in a video. The Miami Herald reports a store manager says the shopping center was closed at the time and the film crew was allowed in the store. Pembroke Pines officials say the city hadn't been given a permit for the filming and the shopping center's management team says it also was not aware. Police say, however, nobody was charged. Police say a stash of cocaine worth up to $2 million discovered inside a trailer hauling guard from California after staff at a Northwest Indiana Highway way station grew suspicious, perhaps hungry. State troopers called Monday to a Porter County way station along Interstate 94 after a staff member inspecting a commercial truck's trailer spotted a black case that appeared inconsistent with its load of 18,000 pounds of minced garlic. The Northwest Indiana Times reports the case contained about 50 kilos of cocaine, estimated to be worth nearly $2 million on the street. Troopers arrested two California men who were in the truck. There you have it, your entertainment news. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. We didn't warn you. Oh, my God. There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. It's the most talked about show on television, The Bachelorette, where 25 eligible bachelors try to win the hand of one single woman. And now, Bob and Tom Television brings you a new twist on this hit show. She's 30 and single. She's... What the hell do you mean by that? Oh, uh, uh, nothing. Meet Linda Jackson. Now, here come the fellas. Say hello to Todd Williams. Hi, Linda. I'm really pleased to... Yeah. Next. Uh, and here's our next eligible guy. Say hello to... Hold it. Are you really going to say each time, say hello to Dick Ding Dong or whatever? <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> okay. Here he is, Jerry Peterson. Hello, Linda. I can't tell you how happy I am to finally meet you. And right, right. Uh, what do you do, Jerry? Uh, well, I own my own consulting business and... Ah, uh, consulting, eh? <laughs> and when did you lose your Amway dealership, Jerry? Huh? Jeez, what a bitch. She's the bitch Lorette. She's single. 720 Q95, it's the Bob and Tom Show. All right, some hate mail we got to get to. Uh, but first, um, <laughs> right. we have a forecast you're not going to hate, right, Christy? Oh, my gosh, no. Q95, Fox 59 weather. Brought to you by the Car X Man. Plenty of sunshine today. Look for a high of 58. Partly cloudy down to 40 overnight. We start out partly cloudy on Friday, then cloud up in the afternoon with a high once again near 60, clear in 29. Thank you very much. Oh, got a love letter about the uh, state fair lights. Oh, good. Uh, we've been talking about those Christmas nights of light state fairgrounds um, with a uh, suggestion 
Um, uh, make sure that you've uh, got the kids uh, have done all their bathroom chores prior to uh, yes. getting in line. Just a pretty good idea. You don't want to be peanuts yet. Uh, um, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show with Ace Chick, Josh, I'm Tom. That's Willie G. Christy Lee is in her own little room, the Navy Federal Credit Union News Room. Hi, everybody. Josh, of course, technically in the uh, I Hate Steven Singer.com chair and desk. Mm-hmm. And Ace Cosby, of course, proprietor of the Ace Cosby joke of the day. And uh, Mr. Cosby is sitting in the OmahaStakes.com. Ace Cosby joke of the day chair. A uh, couple updates. Uh, you were saying that they're gonna, not going to do the Rose Parade technically, but they're going to do a uh, kind of a yeah. TV special with one others, Cheryl Crow. I, we found out Gary Sinise yes, I, has I the Lieutenant that. Dan Band. Yeah. Uh, the most chilling words in uh, American entertainment is, is a magnificent actor. Has a band, <laughs> so I'm sure he may be very good. I've never seen go, Gary's band. Go, yeah, but it's fun. Uh, now um, uh, we also have um, <laughs> this letter. Uh, you, Forrest Gump. We had Gump, a uh, Gump, Gump. we had a uh, a news story, a very interesting story about a uh, a company called what was it called the Mega Corporation? Of, uh, Mega Global is that what? Mega it was? Global Corporation <laughs> that they they set a world record with a giant tree made of sardine cans, and I said I've never eaten sardines. I don't think I've ever even seen a can of sardines. Oh, you've seen one. Do you, you probably just walk right I mean, by them. I've do, never, you equate, do you equate that with down on your luck hobo activity? No, I just, it's one of those things you hear about all the time and never see. I just don't, but you eat them. I right? do, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this guy writes, uh, Tom claims to have seen a can of sardine. Isn't there a Bob and Tom poster and album oh. where you guys are painted inside a can of sardine? Yes, there yes, is. Yes, there is. Canned right. laughter. Canned right laughter. There. Yeah. A classic Bob and Tom. looking right album. at it. It's right in front of you. <laughs> where is it? In between Josh, just to his right. Hey, there you go. Yeah, but I mean, my, uh, that doesn't mean I've eaten a real sardine. And it's got a little right. sardine key, too. That's my yeah. uh, mouse pad. See, look. That's a beautiful drawing by the great artist Rob Day. I'll show you, Willie. We'll, we'll look. I'll look. We'll Let post me see. that. And then Chick oh, McGee yeah. has the... Uh, God, we, oh, I wish we still had those things. The, the I'm taking bids on this. Mouse Everybody pad. Like buy it. The, uh, the, uh, the sardine <laughs> mouse pad. No, but I still... I'm just saying, I've never eaten sardines. Sorry. And has any, Ace, have you ever eaten sardines? No. Okay. Uh, Chick? No. Okay. And I'll eat pickled herring on New Year's Eve. It's a good luck. Thing. What? My dad and I would have it every New Year's Eve. It was a good, it's a oh, good I luck like, thing to have. I like pickled herring. herring uh, yeah, herring. Yeah, her yes. pickled herring's real good. Oh. I've never heard of that tradition. Oh, you. yeah. Would you? I do you thought spread it was corned beef a, and cabbage. You, you spread it on toast. How do you eat it? Yeah, right out of the jar is how we did it. Yeah. Mm. Just took a chunk and. How does it Down taste? Down the hatch. I, I, think it, I think it tastes flavorful. <laughs> okay. How's that working for you? It's really a rich flavor. It's yeah. It's. Fishy, obviously. Really? But yeah. Okay. Very rich. All right. Well, thank you very much. You know, I've Wait never a eaten you a sardine. A, you have a letter, John? <laughs> Dear dumbass. Oh. Paren Chick. Oh, geez. The dateline in a news story is not oh. a reference to the calendar date. There Rather, go. it is the reference to the location where the I story takes Gary, place. Indiana. Didn't I just say okay. that? Yeah. Chick but said Gary, Indiana. Nobody said dateline then gave the I date. didn't Barry say uh, goes Gary, on to say, Indiana. okay, I agree that the term is misleading, so I probably shouldn't be so harsh on you. I just wanted an excuse to address one of you as dear dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, thanks. This man's name, Barry Morris. <laughs> Guest stars. <laughs> it's a fugitive theme. <laughs> also starring Barry Morse as Lieutenant Gerard. Gary <laughs> Sinise and his crap band. And Barry, <laughs> later. our writer, Barry Morris, went on to say, not the guy in the fugitive, no. <laughs> but Mark Rippian's friend who still doesn't own one of his jock straps. Oh, sure. Yeah. We know him. It's uh, Rippin, Josh, not Rippian. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, if you talk to Mark, he prefers. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. Dateline. <laughs> Somewhere. Where's he? Uh, Dateline Oregon. FedEx Field, whatever the hell. You know, I've never eaten a sardine, but I've used a Porta John, and now they have singing Jingle Johns. You don't <laughs> want to hear about that. Okay, sorry. You want to talk about the sardines because they're a mega global corporation. Uh, you just. <laughs> When's the last suck. time you used a Porta John? <laughs> When's the last time I used a porta john? Yeah. Uh, number two. Number oh, two. Wait, no, don't date. Now you're uh, making it really hard. Never number oh. two. I can't remember, but I'm sure I did two or three times this 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 past year somehow somewhere. I, I one, think. one in it or two in it. Just a, always a one, man. I don't like a away game. You guys games. are lucky to have that play. urinal Some, thing. Sometimes things happen. I can't play away game. Can't do it. I can barely do it here <laughs> <laughs> when I have to. Yeah, we got to go with my concept. Yeah. The so app put on the virtual. You put on the virtual uh, glasses. The, the, yeah. It's called Home Field Advantage. It the turns Oculus no matter no matter what terrible bathroom you're in, and the worst gas station in the middle of nowhere, it turns it into your home bathroom. You know that's going to happen. Oh, I know, and I won't get credit. No, you won't. Okay. You still you have a fish story, don't you, Chick? 
I do have a fish story. Stupid world record. Hey, we found that gold fl- goldfish that you flushed down the toilet. Uh, park rangers in South Carolina have discovered a nine-pound goldfish. Nine pounds. Nine pounds. The director of the Greenville wow. County Recreation, or is it Gre- Greenville in South Carolina? Mm-hmm. They said the crew caught the 15-inch long fish <laughs> what? over a foot long and nine pounds. Since goldfish are not native to South Carolina, they <laughs> believe the fish they found was a... Monster. A flushed (laughs) pet. Oh, my gosh. The goldfish does not match the world record, however. Guinness World Records state the longest known goldfish, 18.7 inches. According to National Geographic, the average weight for a pet goldfish is two-tenths to six-tenths of a pound. (gasps) Wow. And this one was how many pounds? Uh, Five. Nine. 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 Nine pounds. Nine pounds. Wow. Wait, so flushed fish depending on where you are, can actually end up in water, like in Finding Nemo? Apparently. Because I remember a few years ago there was that story saying, do not flush your fish, kids. You're not going to free them because kids were watching Finding Nemo and flushing their fish. Do you guys remember this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the yeah. thing is that depending on I the type of sewage that. system you have, right. you, you may have a so-called grinder. <laughs> they don't have a grinder in that movie. <laughs> That'd be rather... <laughs> he'd suddenly have a filet of fish. Oh. <laughs> uh, this, wow. thing, this thing is... Massive. Yeah, oh it is. And my it, God. And it's a, a, undeniably a goldfish. That's, oh, my. That's, it looks like a small <laughs> shark. It's unbelievably large. When you so, caught that, wouldn't you think, oh, my God, I got a red snapper? <laughs> well, the weird thing, Lord. if you read down the story, <laughs> this is really weird. They To catch this thing, yes, they uh, put an electric, it's called, um, sorry, let me read it. It's a, a method called electrofishing which gently shocks the fish, forces them to float to the surface so surveyors can check for any signs of unhealthy water. I was going to say, this can't be... So this that's is not, not legal fishing. No, this, no. Is, this is for the DNR to... to yeah, to yeah, to they were doing a count, count, I guess. Right, it stuns the fish. Yeah. So... Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's probably someone who brought it, brought the fish to this pond in the middle of nowhere and heaved it in there. Probably. A friend of mine, uh, um, Ricky Rydell, won a f- goldfish at the State Fair one year. Mm-hmm. And um, he kept putting it in bigger and bigger and bigger tanks. He eventually, did you ever see this? He eventually... Uh, he would feed it cheeseburgers, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, he eventually had a tank that was, I don't know, eight feet long. And this thing was huge. So they will keep growing. So... Uh, uh, wouldn't he just throw a cheeseburger in the tank? Remember that? I think he did, he did. feed it cheeseburgers. He'd throw little pieces of cheeseburger you in You like there. cheeseburgers. You never see a big goldfish mounted on somebody's wall, do you? No, you don't. No. That'd be pretty funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Next it to the sailfish. <laughs> and I'm assuming that goldfish are not edible. I can't are they imagine. Like, carp, are they, they real bony? I, I know a guy that used to, uh, his, he said that his uncle used to always chug goldfish in a beer. It was like a party uh. trick. Oh. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. A little, like, I don't yeah. know if it was a goldfish, but like a tiny little fish, put it in a beer and just chug it down. Yeah. Oh, that's did he, so special. Did he clear the mud vein first? <laughs> I yeah, I don't know, you know. No, he ate the no, fish whole. It would yeah. be alive, I Wrapped all the way down his well, gullet, I'm sure. Yeah, he fed trip. the fish laxatives for two days, and then he uh, <laughs> clean it out. And then, uh, and then you want to give it baby really, laxatives, of course, because fish. is a really oh, yeah. macho, dumb thing to do. Ugh. Wasn't that like a thing in the 20s and... Yes. I don't know. You were around. We weren't. In the, that's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like, was yeah, you still live there. How are how are things? Like a frat thing or something? Okay. It sounds like a frat thing. Yes. Okay. Is that sports? Yes. That is. Okay, sports. ladies and gentlemen, that comes wherever you go, go wherever you go, always be a good sport. <laughs> now, now, Christy. Officials in Colorado saved a deer after it got caught in the string of Christmas lights. Oh, dear. According to Colorado Parks Wildlife, the buck had stumbled into carelessly hung holiday lights in Colorado Springs. Oh, we're blaming the lights, are we? The The tangled lights were knotted around the animal's antlers, obscuring its vision and likely preventing it from being able to eat or drink. The deer was safely rescued before it could be seriously injured, but the agency has asked residents, please decorate with wildlife oh, in mind. Have you seen the picture of this guy? No. I don't care about it. No, don't care. <laughs> Josh, I, I'm sure that... Um, well, they were, were they blinking? Of, they're running out of rifles. They can't kill all the deer. What's do you have on? any, uh, do you have any uh, Christmas lights? In? Oh, many, yeah. There Are they up? Yes. Okay, very good. No. I don't have any on the outside of my house. You don't have any on the outside? No. no share oh. the Christmas spirit. I have a wreath. I have a big wreath on okay, the outside. Very, of very nice. Um, every year I go into my garage. Yes. And the the, the the prior, at the end of the season, earlier, I've 
I may do a really good job of making sure that all my Christmas lights are properly wound up and they're in separate bags so they don't get all tangled. Somehow every year, between <laughs> my doing that and Thanksgiving when I get the Christmas lights out, they're all tangled up. Huh. A total disaster of a mess. If well, you I look think, at this yeah. poor deer, uh, th this animal is, uh, it, it just looks like the ones from my garage. I think Willie, Willie can explain this. Your kids do it every year. They just go in and tangle the lights. Yeah, we call it mess with dad day. <laughs> yeah. We all go in there. Okay. Yeah, I smoke the joint before. This, we kind of just, you know. I just don't like up. how the story mm -hmm. said, hey, uh, the, the, it walked into the carelessly hung lights. No, you're a carelessly walking deer. Yeah. yeah why is it the <laughs> person that hung the lights' is fault? Why because they, deers, <sighs> why does the deer get off with and stupidly coming out of the forest? Have you seen the picture? A deer walked off a rudely placed cliff the other day. Yes. <laughs> you know, well, maybe you shouldn't have walked off the cliff. When you hung your Christmas lights, did you think about the deer today or yesterday, whenever you did it last week? Come on. Nobody little, does that. I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm a little shocked, Christy, that you're on the side of the lights here. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> because the deer didn't know. Um, it looks like, this looks like Dasher on December 26th. Oh. A rough night last night? Oh, uh, hey. God. All right. <laughs> After we finished, someone brought out tequila. Never again. <laughs> okay. All right, you right there. Uh, so, yeah, this, we've been getting a lot of stories about various animals. They got buckets stuck in their head. And well, yeah. This poor little fella. It's really kind of sad. But they, they got him already. He's they fine. got, they, yeah, they, they, he's fine now. Okay. Oh, look. Uh, there's, there's a reindeer. <laughs> Okay, get the knife. Uh, Cut the lights. You would uh, a reindeer, not just a. Yes, yeah, a reindeer. I, it's holiday time. <laughs> okay, what's up? We, we have a request for a little something of a Christmassy nature. Oh, wait a minute! I just saw a picture of the deer. You wouldn't kill a reindeer. Yeah. Oh. Also coming up, we have Christy leading. Uh, excuse me, Christy Lee reading a list of words that you can't say on the radio. Oh, sure. That's so part of that's part of a new TV special. Yeah, okay. and the other one is the most <laughs> mispronounced words in 2020, which I will definitely screw up. But right now we have this song. Josh here. You know, this holiday season, I wanted to write a song about someone I admire, respect, and love. I couldn't think of anyone, so instead I wrote a song about Tom Griswold. Or as I like to call him, Mr. Grizz. You're a mean one, Mr. Grizz. You really are a jerk. You're insulting and demeaning. You're a prickish piece of work, Mr. Grizz. You're a frozen-hearted ass bag, and you drive us berserk. You're a nutcase, Mr. Grizz. You truly are insane. You're a certifiable psycho with a highly abnormal brain, Mr. Grizz. Your mental illness is something even the finest psychologist cannot explain. You're so boring, Mr. Grizz. <laughs> Those stories you repeat, your references are dated and your knowledge obsolete, Mr. Grizz. <laughs> Listening to you makes us all want to lie down in the middle of a busy street. <laughs> You're repulsive, Mr. Grizz. You have no allure. You're as sexy as a scrotum covered in syphilitic sores, Mr. Grizz. You've got all the sex appeal of a steaming pile of manure. You're a child, Mr. Grizz. Your jokes are juvenile. Anuses and feces are the things that make you smile, Mr. Grizz. You talk more about poop than a compulsive coprophile. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, Tom, I, I, I had no idea you were here. Josh, you understand, I'm the boss here, and... Yes, yes. I write all the checks. Oh, oh, um, good point. I, I, uh, well, um, how about this? 
You're a genius, <laughs> Mr. Driz. That's better. You truly are the best. Very good. Everyone who knows you should consider themselves blessed, Mr. Driz. Walt, sir. I like that. <laughs> uh, you're an extremely intelligent, uh, wonderfully funny, supreme human being, and that, that giant penis of yours, well, <laughs> we're quite impressed. Why, thank you. <laughs> Josh Arnold and the Consensuals, and uh, one of the classics, certainly. Oh, a tribute, my gosh. A tribute to Mr. Grinch. We'll get another song from Josh coming up, and more Christmas and holiday favorites. Uh, many by request. If you've got a good one, send it to Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. Or grab the Bob and Tom app. It's free. And, uh, by the way, you can watch us. Uh, where, Ace? We've got this switching up here. BobandTom.com slash live. BobandTom.com slash live. See what's going on right now in the room. Ah, what's okay. going on? Well, you're right over there. I can see you, yeah. Christy Lee. Uh, you want to give me the teaser, Christy? Yeah, coming up, we have footballs in prison, but it's not um, a I, game. I love that movie. Longest oh. Yard? Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, trying to think of Longest Yard and I couldn't come re up with it. Remade it? Yeah. I hit my head over the weekend. I'm not right. Oh, that's right. You <laughs> face plant from your dog. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Well, good. Oh, we've got, and we got a little bit of Donnie Baker coming up. Yes. Al Jackson, also the legendary Mr. Skin. Uh, and, um, wouldn't it be great to win point. the lottery? Oh, yeah. I sure would. Yeah. yeah, but uh, there's a lottery story that's it's good news, bad news. Sure. For 50 people. I'll tell you what that's about coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll free at 1-888-BOB-TOM-1 or at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thursday, December 10th, 2020. I'm Mark Allison. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. On the way, the world's foremost authority on celebrity nudity, Mr. Skin, will be zooming in, celebrating his top 10 celebrity nude scenes of the year. Didn't know there were any scenes being done here in 2020, but Mr. Skin on top of it, and we'll find out more later this morning right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom Sports Update. The NFL's medical director says all protocols were followed when the Ravens wide receiver Des Bryant pulled from the field before the 34-17 win over Dallas on Tuesday night. Bryant initially had an inconclusive test for COVID prior to warm-ups, but an ensuing test came up positive and caused him to set out a game against his former teammate. Dr. Sills said he made the final determination that there were no high-risk close contacts to the case, so there was no need to remove any other player. 
Former ABC baseball play-by-play announcer and now NFL Sunday Night Football announcer Al Michaels has been voted the Ford C. Frick Award for Broadcast Excellence by the Baseball Hall of Fame. And in college basketball last night, Michigan State at Virginia, Sam Houston at Houston, Robert Morris at West Virginia, UT Martin at Tennessee, and Louisville at Wisconsin all postponed or canceled. In games that were played, Baylor, Wisconsin, Texas, Texas Tech, Richmond, and Florida State all win. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Thomas, Kenny Thomas. <laughs> I can't. Hey. Big news in this camp, Cowboy. What? Big news. <laughs> yeah, I just tested positive for going above and beyond for my clients. Oh, <laughs> that's very clever. Oh, just for a second. All right. I've lost all taste of smell, unless it's the aroma of free shipping through December 28th. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> for renewal no, for first-time clients. And I've lost my sense of taste. Especially when I look at the sample cases from our competition. <laughs> oh, I see. That's fine. Oh, this is going to kill the next one. hi Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom, well-meaning, but... Yeah, they're, they're all messed up. More than slightly confused. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're the one, baby. Oh, yes, do oh, it. Yeah, <laughs> you are the only one. Yes, yes. Hey, wait. Oh, come on, baby. Did you bring it? Did you bring any, you know, protection? Of course I did, baby. Let me let me put it on. Just get my fingers under this flap. This just loops over this fold of flesh. It's and... not too big, is it? <laughs> no, it's a perfect fit. Seven and a quarter, not to brag. <laughs> just my size. Let me just... Pull down on this. Okay, I'm ready, darling. And, and I brought you one, too. So remember, when you have sex, put on a helmet. <laughs> Each year, thousands of Americans suffer serious head injuries while engaging in lovemaking activities. Your lover may forgive you for not wearing protection, but your headboard won't. Please, don't have sex without wearing a helmet. Oh, baby, I'm so glad you remembered the helmet. You're so sensitive and thoughtful. What can I do to make you happy? Well, you could uh, pull up your visor, take out that mouth guard, and try on these knee pads. Oh, lover for you. Get this off. I'd do anything... Could you hand me the safety goggles? Use your head before you get yours injured. Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24-7, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. 744 at Q95, it's the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, everybody. Hey, you've got a love letter about the lights, the Christmas nights of lights at the state fairgrounds. That's right. They're very cool. Be sure to go at night. Yeah, they're much better when it's dark. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah you get in the car, tune your radio just right. And be sure to have the kids uh, go potty before you get there. Just a little tip. Yes, yeah. indeed. There, there you go. Uh, uh, you can check them out. Uh, for more information, go to Q95.com. By the way, also, uh, we've got our TV show tonight. It's called Bob and Tom Tonight on My Indie TV 23. And tonight, all will be revealed. Uh, or, yeah, it's available everywhere except for Ace's house. I don't know why. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. I don't know about you, but I can feel it. Oh, what are I can you feel feeling? It. Oh, it's in the air. What? Well, it's it's uh, it's the delightful aroma of <laughs> Omaha steaks. <laughs> oh yeah. Because Ace Cosby, our engineer, is actually sitting not at the board as they call it, the control board. No, he's at the OmahaSteaks.com Ace Cosby joke of the day sphere. It envelops that entire sector of the room over there with Ooh. the Ace Cosby joke of the day, which he will perform shortly for the benefit of uh, Josh, <laughs> Christy, Chick, <laughs> Willie, and yours truly. This is Tom speaking. Well, ladies and gentlemen, th 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 these aren't really jokes, ladies no. and gentlemen. Oh, sure. These are... Uh, uh, right now? Uh, th these are components of what makes up uh, contemporary culture. Go. Well, I, I don't know a lot about computers, but I'm trying to learn. Okay. Mm, it's good for you. You know what happens? You know what to do when your computer gets too hot? No, what do you uh, do when your computer gets too hot? Open window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Mm. <laughs> I, I think I would go open windows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or open, uh, yeah. open all the windows? Or no. op open the windows? 
I funny. think I would just go open windows. It's funny as is. I, okay, oh, all right. Yeah. I, I, I didn't disagree get it strong. Oh, I, I, I didn't, I didn't get, get the window windows connection. I just thought because yeah, you're a Mac cold. guy. You got to open yeah, Apple. If you're Apple, <laughs> right. you're not going to get the whole windows, windows thing. I, uh, thank you very much. In yeah, the meantime, you Safari or Chrome. Uh, we have. Um, we have Christy Lee. Now, Christy has done yes, some sir. preparation for this next news story. It involves, right? uh, involves the very fine actor uh, Nicholas Cage, and he's going to be doing a TV special. Christy, do you have any of the details on this? Yes, he's going to host an unscripted comedy series called The History of Swear Words. The Netflix show will explore the origin usage of curse words as well as their cultural and scientific impact. Fun. The show will also include interviews with experts with each of the six episodes devoted to one single swear word. The History of Swear Words will launch on January uh, 5th on Netflix. And the words featured in the series are... And I, I this is Christy reading them, but they have been uh, beeped where, where we in, in the cases where they're inappropriate. Yes. Okay, so be listening for these. Christy, did you, you, you already did this? It's all, I did. Did you proofread it and everything? I didn't. I've, I just recorded I it. Dean did his are, magic. I don't know. I hope he did the magic all the way. Here we yeah. go. The words featured in the series will be... Bitch, dick, pussy, and damn. Oh, I guess I get to say damn. some of those. I didn't know that. Oh, damn. <laughs> what, did Dean get a phone call halfway through that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's listen again to Chris. So this is once again Nicholas Cage. Yes. Fine actor, bad toupee. Nick will be hosting the History of Swear Words on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, I say it's a great toupee. January 5th. I you think, think it that's looked a great pretty toupee? good. Yes. Are you looking at the same picture I'm looking at? Yeah, well, so. you have toupee uh, phobia or something. Well, I mean, you know, you don't look like you know, Elvis in 54. Well, he is afraid of them. They do wake him out. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would have just passed the mentally. very strong. Uh, here they are, once again, Christy reading the words from Nicolas Cage's new show, The History of Swear Words. The words featured in the series will be f sh bitch, dick, pussy, and damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Well, so you've got your F word. Yeah, you got your S word. Your S word. So we'll find out if the, the B word. Yeah. Notice they passed on the C word. Yeah, they did. I'm surprised by that. Hmm. Is there a corresponding <laughs> <laughs> word yeah. for every letter? Oh. A, B, C, D. I don't know about E. What would E be? Your E word. Munich? No. Uh, yeah. I don't think so. I don't know. No. You don't want to go too much farther down. It starts getting really un right. unpleasant. <laughs> F. Gee, I can't think uh, of one. Um, so uh, this is the promo. This is Mr. Nicholas Cage doing a promotional All announcement. All right, for, Matt. For, Let's hear it. All right. For this uh, history of swear words no. on Netflix. Yes, it has the power to stir our souls and intoxicate our minds. Men have died for it. Women have moved in with each other way too soon for it. And to fully <laughs> capture its essence, we must plunge unafraid deep within its enchanted garden. Oh, my friends, we are so close now. Feast your eyes upon the very house of life. Life and death, the temple of sensuality. And a term for that kid too afraid to play dodgeball in gym class. Behold! Wow, I'm not watching yeah. that show. You know what word he's going for. I know what he was yeah. going for. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Sounds fun. What's I think it sounds fun, too. I think he knows exactly what he's playing at yeah. tongue-in-cheek. What, uh, what word is it? It was the P word. Yeah. Oh. That is some bad writing. Well, she said you said that. I think it's I, I think it's decidedly bad. Uh, I mean, and on purpose bad. You mean? Well, it's that. <laughs> it's bad. No, uh, I think it's, it's supposed to be campy and fun. Yeah. How are you going to take this thing seriously? It's a comedy. Okay. And I've always wanted. You always hear that story about for unlawful carnal knowledge. If that's actually a true thing, yeah, it's debated or whatever. Something of the king or that something. Would be, right. That would be the the, the f word. Right. Okay. What do you want, Carl Sagan to host it? Be serious? What, what do you want? No, that, that was just awful. Um, you want hey, yeah, this show's awful. not for you. I, I yeah, just don't watch I will, it. I won't be watching if the writing is that bad throughout. And yet you'll complain about it ad nauseum. Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously, the obvious, choice would have been, the obvious choice for a thing about swearing would have been Samuel L. Jackson. But, uh, Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> I did a little research for you. Have you seen the Samuel L. Jackson uh, Capital One commercial? I have. Or John Travolta's Santa? Yes. I don't know who Mrs. Claus is, but uh, I don't I, think it's his real wife. Is that, uh, is that a reference to Pulp Fiction? Yeah. yeah. She died. So the person, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, because Santa said, Sam. Samuel? All right, have you stopped saying that word? Yeah. 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 Uh, this is uh, the movies with the most cursing. 
the most. This is this list is pretty interesting. Do you want to take a guess, Josh? Yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street, number one. Yeah. 715 curse words. Man. Followed by something quite contemporary. Um, cats? More, uh. contemporary th more contemporary than Wolf of Wall Street? Hamilton? Yeah. From last year. <laughs> From last? Oh, uh, boy. Well, the Hamilton, Irishman? I think, only has three curse words in it. Right? I was just joking. The what? And the Irishman? Is that what you said? No, That's it's um, said. Uncut Gems. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. 646 curse words. Wow. Followed by Casino. That's what I always thought was the number one. Goodfellas is in there somewhere. Uh, right? Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Mm, Fury. That. What's that? That's, Fury uh, is that the tank movie. The story tank of, movie was, the, was Brad Pitt. It was pretty good. Brad Pitt, Shia Oh, Bob. I thought it was the story of a horse and the boy who loved him. <laughs> Once again, yeah, that's, that from the, that's from the 60s. Tons of curse words in it. Why wouldn't it? <laughs> Sixth the most curse words uh, straight out of Compton. Oh, I can see that. Uh, number seven is the Summer of Sam. Mm. Okay. Eight from 97. Josh, you'll have to help me here. Nil by Mouth. Yeah, it's a Gary Oldman movie. He, he directed it. Okay. Oh, um, it's a. Uh, it's never a, heard of it. You can miss it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, number 10, Beavis and Butthead do America. Oh, I didn't realize that had that much really? cussing in it. Yeah, the top 10 curse words. Uh, this, now here's another interesting Pulp list. Pulp Fiction's not in the top 10, huh? Uh, hmm. Actors who have cursed the most in movies. Well, Samuel L. Jackson probably, right? Number three. Really? Uh, number one is astonishing to me, and you maybe you know why. I don't. Uh, Jonah Hill? Yeah, because of Wolf of Wall Street, uh, mainly, and super bad. Super bad. Right. Okay. Uh, this yeah. is the end. He's, he's, he's a foul-mouthed young man. Okay. Number two, Leonardo DiCaprio. There you go. Number Same. four, Adam Same. Sandler, probably mostly from Uncut Gems. Obviously. Have you seen Uncut Gems, Christy? I have not. It's uh, I'd kind of like to. It's very good. It's, I've heard it's very good. It's one of those movies where you keep saying, you're watching, going, don't do it. No, don't do that. Don't oh, do that. See? Oh, he did that. It's intense. That makes me nervous. You will be, you're, you're nervous the whole time. Just oh, to let you yeah, know. that uh, would make me nervous. Number five, Al Pacino. Okay. Was that Casino? No, no, that'd be Scarface and oh. the, right, yeah, the probably Godfrey. mostly Scarface. Yeah, uh, and, and once again, most cursing by an actor. Number six, Denzel. Hmm. Followed by Billy Bob. Number eight, Seth Rogen. Hmm. Number nine, Bradley Cooper, and number ten, Danny McBride. I can see Danny McBride, but Bradley Cooper. Now you'll notice something about these li about this list, Christy. What? I'll do it again by just uh, gender. Guy, 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 guy. guy yeah. Of, do you have any comment about that? No, because guys curse more than women. Oh, no, you were supposed to go F and A. Oh. <laughs> no, I'd, have to, I'd have to hit the button, and that would have been really funny. I probably should have Sorry. coached you on that. No, no, I. All right. So this is anyway. I curse so, enough. I don't need to do it on the air. Who did all this research? Oh, that was based on a very extensive survey. I'm glad you asked, Ace, um, which I have not. Uh, I, I believe Mr. Word <laughs> is the website you can go to. Now, that was funny. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ace. You've been blessed. Let's call you guys. Go kiss the Pope's <laughs> ring. <laughs> Everything else you've been doing, apparently not up to speed. Oh, I, I, I'm well aware. Uh, so anyway, this is Nicolas Cage hosting... The History of Swear History Words. History of Swear Words. Uh, okay, I'm going to play a little bit of this again. This just was, to me, utterly, sorry, utterly witless. Yes, it has the power to stir our souls and intoxicate our minds. Men have died for it. Women have moved in with each other way too soon. See, I would it. hear that at an at audition for a high school play and go, next. <laughs> this is bad acting, bad okay. writing. Yeah, I, I think he's, he's playing it tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, I think yeah. he is, too. And yeah. you're not the director of a high school play, and you're also not a critic for TV. Just I am right now. I can tell you, that gets stinks. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. That's uh, all right. Yeah, I, I think it might be a fun program. I love learning about uh, where words come from. Yeah. Well, I'm a nerd. I can't <laughs> wait to see it. I think it'll be really interesting. Which episode are you going to watch? I'll watch them in order. As, oh, really? Uh, because as they're released. Yeah, mm -hmm. As they're no, no, there's not not one curse word. What what curse word do you use the most? Oh boy! I that mean, is for me, really... I know the answer immediately. For me, well, okay. I, bet I could guess for you. Go ahead. Is it the GD word? It is absolutely Christy Lee. You win. Yeah, that's the worst one in my opinion. It, oh, that to me is one. worse than the F word. When used when my used mom sparingly agree. and. At the right time, it's a beauty. It is a beauty. Oh, yes. what's, what's my dad's favorite? Uh, favorite version of GD is uh, when it proceeds, you ruined Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it usually has got an it in it. It's followed by the word, followed by the word Charlie. I was going to say that too, but I didn't. <laughs> um, your favorite curse word, Ace? I don't curse. You really don't, Ace? No. But do you have a favorite that you that always kind of makes you I laugh? I do like kind of the Battlestar Galactica. The frack? Frack, yeah. 
I bet I could make you curse. <laughs> so oh. When we come back, me. I want everybody to give oh. this some thought. Coming up, a little bit of Donnie Baker. You know, so I'm not going to ask Donnie what his favorite curse would is. No. You know why? He'll <laughs> say it. He'll, he'll tell me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Check out the Bob and Tom Show app and let your voice be heard. Our contact info is right there. It's Ken Tarmac. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Ken Tarmac. Hey, Ken Tarmac. Mark Allison with you on a Thursday. December 10th, can you believe it? Only 15 days till Christmas. That's true. You know what you call a gathering of Bob and Tom podcasts? Funny. That's true as well. Check out all three of our podcasts, Bits and Pieces with Willie G, that Josh Arnold podcast, and the Bob and Tom Show Extra podcast. All just sitting there waiting fresh new content each week. Go to bobandtom.com slash podcasts to download for free and listen. Just wait till after the show, you knuckleheads. I'm Mark Allison from the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk with a Bob and Tom News update. Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine faces one final hurdle before an expected decision to greenlight the shot for use in millions of Americans. Food and Drug Administration advisors meet today to scrutinize the company's data for any red flags or oversights. The public review comes as U.K. regulators investigate two apparent cases of allergic reaction to that vaccine. Safety, the top of mind for the panel of medical experts who will vote on whether to endorse the vaccine. They'll also address unknowns about the vaccine's effectiveness in certain groups. A final FDA decision and the first shots could follow within days. Lawmakers embracing a one-week extension of government funding to buy time for more COVID-19 relief talks. The House on Wednesday easily passed a temporary funding bill that sets a December 18th deadline for Congress to wrap up both a virus relief measure and a $1.4 trillion government spending bill. The Senate expected easily pass the bill before midnight Friday to avert a partial government shutdown. Meanwhile, meanwhile, negotiations continue over another round of virus aid. Haven't we heard this before? Leaders in agreement about helping small businesses and preserving extra unemployment benefits, but disagree over the details of the package. Just get it done. The Justice Department investigating the finances of President-elect Joe Biden's son, including scrutinizing some of his Chinese business dealings and other transactions, according to a person familiar with the matter who spoke to the AP Wednesday. Revelations put a renewed spotlight on questions about Hunter Biden's financial history, which dogged his father's successful White House campaign and were a frequent target of Donald Trump and his allies. They also come at a politically delicate time for the president-elect, who's weighing his choice to lead 
an agency that is actively investigating his son. 2020, everyone, catch it. That's your news update. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Yeah, the only thing more rude than being invited is being asked to be in the wedding party. That's the yes. and rude buy your own, thing and you, you got to buy your own dress and you got to fly. This is such a guy stupid. girl thing, isn't it? This is. If I right ever get married, the there will be no wedding parties. Yep. Now, Josh, have <laughs> you, have you ever been in a wedding? Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, plenty. Yeah, plenty. And, of- and what was your role? Ring bearer. Ring bearer. That's right. I, I, I had <laughs> onion rings in my pocket. So. <laughs> That's Clapping. That's very now funny. he's taking credit for you saying, <laughs> you know he is. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24 7. Hey, this is comedian Ron White, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. How many times have you been auditioning for like a civic theater production? or a Broadway musical or a church show or a school show or something like that. And you had a great audition. You sang a song. Maybe you told a joke or two. And then the director... On Q95, it's the Bob and Tom Show. You would not believe what's going on in here. <laughs> Peel on the onion. Uh, Christy, uh, remind me next week to say what we just learned in here. You're going to be stunned. Oh, wow. Uh, I want to remind you that, um, say you were at Josh's house, you'd look out the windows and go, wow, these windows are so nice. I, I hold my hand up here. I don't see any air blowing through because they're from Window Nation. They're brand new. Oh, sure, Josh bought a pre-lived in house, but now he's got great <laughs> new windows from Window Nation. They've got their special holiday thing happening right now with 0% financing over 60 months on all style windows and they've got more than a thousand different styles plus you get two free windows for every two you buy so josh you needed 10 windows so you bought five very good tell them more josh well get started today visit windownation.com you might say ah it's already winter it's too late no yeah, now no is do. the no perfect way. time and it's window nation's best offer of the year zero percent financing for 60 months on all style windows plus get two free windows with every two you buy no limit is that right? Find out why over 100,000 <laughs> homeowners, including me, visited windownation.com and are thrilled that they did so. That's right. Tell them that Tom and that guy Josh sent you to windownation.com. Ah, let's see. Uh, we're back. Okay. Hello, everybody. It's great to be back. Uh, today, uh, the 10th of December, 2020. I look around the room. I see Ace Cosby, Chick McGee, Josh Arnold. Slightly stunned. We'll, uh, yeah, sorry. Why? We can't discuss what's going on right now. What okay. happened? <laughs> um, now I'm... Uh, it has to do with, out of the room? It has to do with Ace not ever cursing. And, yes, our oh. engineer, Ace Cosby, does not curse. I did not know that about you, Ace. Um... That's really right. interesting. Yeah. I uh, I try not to, but I can't help myself. I asked everybody what their favorite curse word was because uh, we have a news story about the actor Nicolas Cage, very fine actor, Didn't very very me. bad toupee. That's Chick McGee. There's Willie, and I um, still not asking. I, 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 let me finish. Uh, there's a TV special coming up. What's it called, Christy? Uh, with Nicolas Cage on Netflix, it's called The History of Swear Words. And apparently, it's a six parter, and they're going to yes, it starts January fifth. And uh, the words that they're going to do uh, once again. Uh, Christy read these, and Dean did some uh, the the appropriate beeping. But you'll, you'll have to, I think you can probably figure out what's what here. Here we go. The words featured in the series will be f- sh- bitch, dick, pussy, and damn. Well, once again, uh, Dean took a phone call right, uh, <laughs> right there. Um, I uh, yeah, well, uh, but you don't you don't swear at all. Yes. No, okay. Even uh, in the bedroom, in the throes even of passion, in the bedroom. In throws of passion. These words like kitty cat. What, oh, I, come on. What about if, like, if you stub your that. toe uh, just completely by accident, total surprise, bad thing happens? I say, ouch. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, He's, oh. The baby's not asleep. You can speak, okay? <laughs> oh, I told you, well, Christy, that they had that carpenter over at my house. Yes. And a uh, real nice guy, really good carpenter. He was doing some work and just pulverized his thumb with oh. his hammer and he went mother fletcher <laughs> and at the time there was like a that. there was a bank in town that had the name fletcher in it every sure. time i drove by that place i would think about that curse word <laughs> um your favorite curse word chick mcgee oh it's got to be f it begins and ends with f does mine, it really f's, mine too f's a noun f's a verb yeah. no for me it's gd mine f, is f. J- josh my favorite and i don't say it a lot but whenever i hear it it, it kills me every time horse uh oh, yeah. okay yeah s yeah. Yeah. Got it. I, you know, I, I, that's so funny. I just Capital remember, H. I want a bunch of horse. Yeah. <laughs> every now and then, I will make the S word an adverb. I like that very much. Put L-Y at the end of it. <laughs> Why did you do that? 
Oh, really? Iowa. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, Iowa. Yes. Okay. I think I probably the big one, probably F, I think is the main, but I really like a good damn. Calling someone a damn weirdo. Oh, sure. It's always hilarious. Now, OJ yeah. can use it. Damn. Thank yeah. you, Juice. Um, OJ likes it. Yeah. And there are certain ones I don't like that I never use. Uh, but th that are that are in the repertoire certainly, but yeah. I, that I would never use. But Ace uses none of them. What the heck? What uh, the heck no is idea. good? But we have a tribute to that. We'll get to that coming up uh, uh, using substitute words for the dirty ones. But once again, uh, um, Nicholas Cage will be hosting the show coming up on uh, Netflix. So yep, you can um, put the kids to bed and turn the TV up loud and have some fun. Uh, oh, did you grab that? Hello, Bob and Tom show. Hey, Bob and Tom, it's Donnie Baker. Oh, Donnie, how are you, sir? I'm good. Sounds you guys, the way you're talking, sounds like I'm reliving every conversation Bobby Knight had with referee. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like you, Tom. I hate them. Those dicks that use salt substitute cuss words. Hey, so I'd rather you just not cuss and use, like, if you get mad and you stub your toe or backwards go fudge yeah and, and if you step both toes a uh, hot fudge you know mm -hmm. i hate that stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. but i've been up all night so i'm cranky anyway oh, now what well, i've been working on my list of new year's revolutions for 2021 <laughs> donnie, to see if we ever right. get there I, th I think you mean new year's resolutions donnie well then my first Resolution is to tell you to shut the hell up, Tom. <laughs> you damn weirdo. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't want, you know, didn't want a minute, but I, I didn't really accomplish everything I wanted to this year. You didn't? Yeah, nobody well, did. Well, no, yeah, so, it was a rough year. Of course, nobody else did either, unless their New Year's revolution was to stop going out to movies and start fighting with their idiot cousin Lonnie on <laughs> social media more. <laughs> I guess the only positive thing about always having to wear a mask in public is I ain't getting recognized as much, which is good. Oh, okay. I mean, I've gotten confused for that dick from Puddle of Muds for years. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, and that kid from the Sixth Sense, uh, Haley Joe Osmond. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. really? That's happened once or twice. I swear to God. Mm -hmm. And when I wear a cloth mask, some at work think I look like a chubby, chasing lesbian who works up front in Lavana. You know? <laughs> she got the same hairstyle. She thinks it's real funny calling me Rosie O'Donnell all the time. Oh, really? And then going, hey, sorry, Donnie, if I weren't gay, I'd still want to scissor with you. you know? <laughs> so Christian. <laughs> but uh, one actual revolution I'd set myself for in 2020 to stop correcting, I want to say this, and I want to stop correcting other people's grammar regular. Okay. I was coming to find out I just can't help myself when people ain't using proper grammar good yeah. or just normal words good. Yeah. Really? You know, yeah. I have to say, I've got to say something. When, uh -huh. You know, when I hear somebody say, like, the impact of normalcy, I just want to punch them right in their gizzards. Do it. Do it, Donnie. Do it. You know what I'm talking about, Josh. Oh, yes. And then since 2020 was such a crap year, for 2021, I'm setting some like, more practical goals. One, I'm giving up uh, vaporizing. Oh, okay. All right. They never carry my broke dick brand at the vape store anyway. Oh, what's that? I like to go to. I use Vicks, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up to two jars a month of it. Oh, oh Vicks Vapor oh. Rub, yeah. Well, it's expensive, but on the plus side, Christy, I ain't caught the Rona yet. Yeah, well, okay. okay. There you go. And my second resolution for 21, I'm going to give up looking at porn. Really? Mm. Well, that's actually more of a request from Vicky to head librarian. Uh. <laughs> Told her I promised. And uh -huh. third and foremost, I'm only going to eat gluten-free bread this year. Gluten-free. Gl gluten, gluten-free, I think you mean, Donnie. Hell, I even found gluten-free rubbers at a dollar store. <laughs> wow, wow. On sale. And then some others that were semi-permeable, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> that's no good. Well, <laughs> Not a rubber. Dad. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my final resolution is to give up a few things. Okay. I'm going to give up swearing, just like you, Okay, hate. okay. Mm -hmm. Give up alcohol. Right. A junk food. I'm going to give up ice cream. <laughs> going to give up pan pizza. <laughs> Finally going to give up my pager. Oh. Uh, well, with all this 5G, who knows? I'm going <laughs> to give up biting my toenails. <laughs> <laughs> And this special one-time only announcement from Donnie Baker. I'll no longer, I swear to God, I hate to sound like Ringo Starr's. Peace and love.
peace and love. I'll no longer be autographing the old Playboy issue that features my mom, Phyllis, and the women of Walmart spread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's got to be creepy. <laughs> uh, I better go. I want to load up on that glutton bread before I go code turkey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank right, you. Yeah. Well, yes. He's going to have a rough 2021 if yeah, he follows very, all those. Very creepy oh. watching someone. And Donnie, that playboy, and yeah. shine right there by the hair. Just awkward. Just, just awkward. Well, it is his stepmom, and, and, Phyllis. Yeah. Well, still, still it's like, very, yeah. very awkward. Uh, so, uh, did we d determine your favorite curse word? And any, everybody yeah. got theirs out there? I think everybody got theirs out. So, Christy, yours is the F word? Not, yeah, it's the one that usually comes out. It's, I don't know mm -hmm. what happens. We don't, but we don't have to it's most often used in connection with you, of course. But, I mean, <laughs> is there an ing on it then? It depends Many on the situation. Right? Strung Ing, together with any of the other good ones. Ing, er. Because you got your A word, or the A-H word. That's you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't use that one that often, to be honest. I do. It's Road rage. Good. I say, like, I had a good-ass time, right? You know, like That's that okay. way. That's okay. Yeah. That's more no, of No, I'll emphasis. say the effing a-hole. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went with effing A-H. Nobody's than Christy. Christy. Potty mouth. You just, you just can't help herself. Well, it's usually I'm by myself in the car when I'm driving. Have you know, people have forgotten how to drive I, in 2020. I totally agree. I, don't, I, I, am, I have no proof. I, got, I don't know what's happened. It's just beyond bad right I now. no longer cuss in the car. Really? Because I, there was an incident. Uh oh. Where I was making a right. Yes. All right. Yeah. Going off and I'm making a right. And there was a person, uh, apparently I wasn't going right uh, quick enough, meaning I was at the stop sign, or yes. the stoplight rather, and I could have made the right, but I wanted the other cars coming down that road to go first. But this person thought I was waiting too long. Came up beside me to go in front of me. Does that <gasps> all this make sense? Oh my yeah. gosh! And it was a woman driving, and it was in the in the springtime, and I had my windows down, <laughs> and I uh, <laughs> I looked, I turned my head, and I said, "You see?" Ooh. Oh. And I said it right to her ten year old daughter in the passenger seat. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to speak on her behalf. <laughs> Why weren't you taking your right turn? Because it was one of those things where if I pulled out, the person already in the road coming that way would have had to slow, slow down. down pretty, yeah. Yeah. Pretty uh, abruptly. <sighs> okay. All right. Well, so. Mm, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I went, you know what? I'm never getting, I'm, I'm done with that. I good felt so bad. Good for you. I'm not. Okay. Me <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't, I can't help myself. Coming up, a special surprise again. Today? Yes. Another one? Is it Joe Theismann again? No, yesterday's oh. surprise was an interview with Joe Theismann. Is yeah. that, did we post that uh, somewhere? So the people yep. can yep. listen to it? Okay, cool. Is George Blanda? Um, no, it's not. A, <laughs> isn't George Is he still dead? alive? George, George Blanda? Yeah, well, here, this, this is a fun game, Alive or Dead. Oh. I've got an autographed hat in my office. A Blanda hat? Yeah. How, how recently? I got a... A couple months ago, sent to me. Oh, oh, oh so well, okay. it does. I, that, oh, right. that would be really special. If, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. It is Lee Harvey Oswald signed calendar. I, uh, <laughs> with, a, with a day circled in November. Uh, uh, sorry, where were we? Um, <laughs> things oh, to do. Uh, uh, Coming, yeah, a little surprise. I, I, I uh, another one. I think you're going to like it. Uh, George Blanda died in 2010. I hate to tell you. Even oh. though uh, yesterday you came through magnificently, I can't understand how you could have anything going to uh, today. You're going to like it. Coming up, special surprise. All right. Right. right now, I want to remind you, you can surprise uh, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your friends that live far away. Everybody walk in this land. Um, you can get them some, uh, some delicious Omaha steaks. I got some for Kostaki. He took a picture of the box when it came to his house. Sure a tower did. of food. Tower. Yeah. He's um, right. Uh, the Omaha steaks, they've got a special thing going on for friends of the Bob and Tom Show. It's the Deluxe Grillers Assortment. And uh, if you type in BTS, like Bob Tom Show, in the top of that search bar, when you go to omahasteaks.com, You'll get this uh, special Grillers Deluxe with a, a special bonus of uh, saving yourself some money and some special stuff. Josh, what am I talking about? That's right. With the Deluxe Grillers Assortment, not only do you get those, oh man, the butcher's cut filet mignons and a vast variety of entrees, sides, and desserts, you also get four free burgers and a free digital meat thermometer at an exclusive price available only to you, the Bob and Tom Show listener. Just go to omahasteaks.com. Do it today, won't you? Enter our code BTS into the search bar to get these great deals. Mm -hmm. Very tasty. And uh, we've sent them to uh, several others. Uh, 
uh, other people, including uh, Al Jackson, who we're going to be talking to in about five minutes. And uh, we'll see if Al got his steaks yet. It's, it's a great idea. OmahaSteaks.com, BTS in the search bar. Shop the best gourmet gifts of the season. Once again, OmahaSteaks.com. Remember, that's uh, Ace Cosby at the OmahaSteaks.com joke desk. These are no joke. Uh, some of Ace's jokes are well done. Bad jokes are rare. But Omaha Steaks, that's no joke. Mm. Tell them the Bob and Tom Show sent you. We're coming right back with uh, Al Jackson. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, this is comedian John Evans. Padum, 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 and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, hope you're having a great morning. Our West Coast Mountain correspondent, Al Jackson, zooming his way in shortly. Also, the author of a new children's book, Where is Baby Ford? Available at aljacksonlive.com. Portions of the proceeds benefit the Firefly Autism School in Lakewood, Colorado. Al Jackson's son attends there and is on the spectrum. So the uh, book is about his son. Where is baby Ford? Very cool. We're proud of Al Jackson and we'll be laughing along with him as he quizzes Tom and tries to get him just a bit more hip. Coming up right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with your Bob and Tom Entertainment News from the Navy Federal Credit Union Entertainment News Desk. The names of America's preeminent infection to disease expert and its incoming vice president have topped this year's list of most mispronounced words. Anthony Fauci and Kamala Harris are among a number of famous names that made the list released Wednesday. The U.S. captioning company, which captions and subtitles real-time events on TV and in courtrooms, has been compiling the list with Babbel, a language learning app company, since 2016, Todd Ezrin, a singer, easy for me to say, Todd Ezrin, a senior linguist at Babel, said the list unsurprisingly reflects a year dominated by presidential politics and the coronavirus pandemic. Police in South Florida descended on what they thought was an armed break-in at a men's clothing store Tuesday morning after people were spotted storming in with rifles but arrived to find a music video in process of filming. A Pembroke Pines police spokeswoman says the rifles were fake, the men holding them actors in a video. The Miami Herald reports a store manager says the shopping center was closed at the time and the film crew was allowed in the store. Pembroke Pines officials say the city hadn't been given a permit for the filming and the shopping center's management team says it also was not aware. Police say, however, nobody was charged. Police say a stash of cocaine worth up to $2 million discovered inside a trailer hauling garbage from California after staff at a Northwest Indiana Highway way station grew suspicious, perhaps hungry. State troopers called Monday to a Porter County way station along Interstate 94 after a staff member inspecting a commercial truck's trailer spotted a black case that appeared inconsistent with its load of 18,000 pounds of minced garlic. The Northwest Indiana Times reports the case contained about 50 kilos of cocaine estimated to be worth nearly $2 million on the street. Troopers arrested two California men who were in the truck. There you have it, your entertainment news. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. This is Greg Warren, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Uh, morning, Bob and Tom Show. Who's this? This is Jesse. Hi, Jesse. What can we do for you? Uh, I know you guys aren't talking about the uh, body piercing right now, but I wanted to give Jay a word of warning. Uh -huh. okay. It hurts. It what? That the nipple ring hurts. Uh, uh, do you, do you, have, a, did you have a nipple ring, sir? Uh, I did. Uh, got ripped out. No! Oh! Oh! Oh, no! Uh, but that what? does hurt. What were you doing? 
um, I got it done a couple of years ago at a biker rally. Uh-huh. I was a truck driver, and about a week later, I'm in a truck stop. Uh, hour, and I completely forgot about it. And I'm just sitting there toweling off. All of a sudden, it just, I just felt this sharp pain in my chest, and then I heard tink, tink, tink across the floor, and there goes the nipple ring, and I'm looking down to just pools of blood. Oh, oh wow. Well, that okay. just uh, shows that everybody needs a hobby. I guess they do. Morning, Bob and Tom Show. Who's this? Hello. I want to call and warn Jay Baker, too. Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> about what? Hello, Bob and Tom Show. Yes, yes hello. I want to call and warn Jay Baker, too. Oh, about all the right. piercing? Why? Hello, you're talking about body piercing? Yes, yes we are. Yes, I wanted to call him one Jay Baker, too. Okay, well, oh, sir, oh. What, what did you have pierced, sir? Is this the Bob and Tom yes. show? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Did I call you? Yes. yes. Let me think. Was I told him? 821 Q95, it's the Bob and Tom show. Thank you, legendary voice of Ace Cosby. Uh, uh, we have a quick four. Oh, I was just going to say, Josh, how about the forecast? What? Well, uh, Christy has the forecast. Thank you. Q95 Fox 59 weather brought to you by CarX. Mostly sunny today with a high of 58. Partly cloudy down to 40 overnight. Start out partly cloudy on Friday, then clouding up for the afternoon, but a high near 60, 32 degrees. Currently. Thank you very much, Christy Lee. Uh, don't forget the beautiful Christmas lights, the Christmas nights of lights at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. We're getting love letters from people who've checked those out. It's really nice, especially when dark, as Chick points out every time. And welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We've got a lot going on, including a surprise coming up shortly. Uh, but first, I'll introduce uh, our engineer. He is Ace Cosby, uh, the legendary Ace Cosby. Um, his, uh, his his face is his past, as he used to say yes. backstage. I have that T-shirt. Do um, you still have the uh, Ace Cosby uh, Sharpie set that I got you? Oh, yeah. How many of those do you have left? A uh, couple hundred. A couple hundred. Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> got to start signing more autographs, Ace. <laughs> uh, let's see. Now, we need to talk about what we were talking about off here, because I have more... Okay. More, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Opinions on what's happening. Uh, but uh, first, uh, we have uh, we have Chick McGee. There's uh, there's a Christy. I'm Tom. That's Josh. Willie G. And I think we're getting the uh, the electronics hooked up. We should be viewing. There we go. Oh dear. Oh my. We have uh, go Browns, baby. Go Browns. <laughs> Al Jackson wearing <laughs> right. a, like a knit. It's a crochet, isn't it? A crocheted, crocheted Cleveland knits. Browns yeah. cap with a face mask. It looks like you've been in a very serious accident and your jaws being that's held. Kind of what I thought too. No, no, it's that's my no, chin strap. Yeah. yeah, that's no face. There's no face mask on that. That's his chin strap. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, right. okay. There we go. Oh, Look at that. Very He's nice. Go Browns. Nine and three, baby. That's right. It's amazing. <laughs> How are they doing it? But they're nine and three. Uh, now, hey, we're happy in Cleveland, baby. And you're welcome, by the way, Al. My boys uh, pounded the Steelers. Yeah. I appreciate that, yep. and let's just say I bet some uh, apples on that game on you guys. So ah. shout out to the Redskins. Oh, okay. excellent. Formerly the Redskins, now yeah. the New York. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Sorry, the Washington, uh, the greater Washington How old am team. I? Team. Go team. It's yeah. hard to remember. Now, uh, uh, Al, before we get to... Um, some of your stuff. I want to run something by with a certain delicacy. I approach this topic. Um, Netflix is going to be featuring a television program, uh, kind of a documentary thing with Nicolas Cage, of all people, uh, as the host, uh, which I think is a really bad choice. Um, <laughs> fine actor, bad toupee. Uh, the, the, That's uh, the only reason you don't like him because yes, of his toupee. Yes, no, no, no. Yeah, I just, he's, he's Who would the, you have had do this show without well, Samuel L. Jackson would have been probably stellar, but it's called The History of Swear Words, Al. Ooh. Um, and uh, I'll let you give it a little bit of thought, but before I get to that, we've all kind of gone over our favorite swear words. It turns out Ace does not curse at all. Not only that, but... Wow. And, and in the bedroom, he doesn't like hearing curse words. No. So when things get nasty, they're... <laughs> he insists on his lover saying intercourse instead of <laughs> the F word. That's what he's saying. And I've asked uh, several ladies on the staff... Too, and they both said, use the BS word. BS, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Now, this is, I call BS. Now, but the thing, not with Ace, because Ace is so odd and so weird. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> surprises you me. You want odd? You want weird? Uh, one of the ladies I asked about this be bedroom behavior was Jess Hooker, and she said, "That's that doesn't happen when Ace is in the bedroom. He go, She goes, but... Ace sent me an urgent email, <laughs> and the that subject urgent. was thur, T -H -U -R, Thursday, Thursday yeah. saying, hey, is that your homemade butter in the fridge? 
<laughs> and Jess said, no, that's not mine, but he can't, he can't stand it. He's something in the butter tray. We talk he's about the talking butter. about this butter all yeah. week. And she said, no, I'll bring you butter Monday. Jesus. Okay. All right. So the point is, uh, we're talking Ace about cursing. Ace texts like an old black grandma. <laughs> <laughs> is this your butter in the fridge? Hey, come finish this orange juice. <laughs> Close the refrigerator door. I don't know. Where are you going? Cool in a hole in the kitchen. Your pants are on the floor. And I see. <laughs> exactly. Ace doesn't uh, uh, get uh, any any uh, sort of stereotypes you may have of mm -hmm. Ace are wrong. It's a very he's unusual. A a very unusual. He's one guy. of a kind. He, he is. I, and I, 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 but <laughs> he's not claimed by any group. <laughs> very, very mis I mean, if you found out that like Ace was going to be on like a, you know, HLN ID channel documentary that he was this weird guy that was quiet, and then they were like, oh, you didn't realize every town he went to, four college coeds went missing. Oh, <laughs> I could I can see it. Quiet yeah. and mysterious, and everybody would be like, you didn't notice the guy that was texting about butter at three. O'clock in the morning. <laughs> Might have been a little bit weird. So yes, Ace, I love you, but I'm I'm looking forward to your episode. <laughs> now, so Al, and again, once again, um, uh, being very careful. Uh, we we went around the horn. Everybody's favorite curse word. Mine, a GD. Oh, that's uh, a good one. The, and I think I I probably inherited that from my father. That was certainly his yeah. favorite one. I never heard him use. Any of the other ones. Really? Okay. I, I really? never never use the F word. He's very old school. Or a, my dad is the kind. He's like your dad, Al. He would wear a tie on Saturday, even if he wasn't going into work. Uh, just one of the. You know, now, now that you're thinking about, I'm thinking about what did my father, uh, the beloved Otha Jackson, uh, he didn't curse a lot. And uh, like, no joke, uh, my dad and, and Ace remind me of each other. Just kind of quiet guys. So my dad wasn't like, a, if the lawnmower doesn't start, I'm going to throw out a couple curse words. Mm -hmm. I also, I think because my dad didn't drink. I think when you drink, you curse more because the slower you get throughout the night. <laughs> you, you, you have those, and every drinker knows this, you have those placeholder curse words because you can't think of what you want to say. So you're like, I was at the 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 blank in the blank in uh, the, the museum. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, the, so it sort of means keep listening. I'm going to remember yeah. the right word in a second. <laughs> right. So I'm yes, going to throw out yeah. a curse word just to emphasize the fact that I'm not done talking. That's, uh, That's it. Interesting. Now, did your dad drink, Tom? Uh, yeah, very little, though. But I mean, he, yeah. uh, he would certainly, he would do his... Uh, I, I learned how to make him drinks when I was like... Did he have the cocktail drink. at five when he got home every he night? He was a big gin and tonic guy for okay. quite some time. Oh, yeah. Uh, but he'd have one, and then if he was very adventurous, he might have a second one. But he, I, the only time I ever heard him curse would be the the GD phrase. Mm. I never heard him use any of the other Tom, ones. It, it, isn't it... Do you ever stop and think about how, you, you know, you, you look at the way White Claw has taken over the world of alcohol. I mean, it really... I mean, they have it on tap at certain places, and White Claw is really just a vodka soda, mm -hmm. but yeah. they just repackaged it, and it, it's just like it, it took the world over. But it, it might be like really the world's first drink, like a a vodka. So what are, what are those? Wait, that's not a screwdriver. What's a screw? That's oh, orange over. juice and vodka. Yeah, yeah, but just they they repackaged the 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 most basic drink, and it's super popular. Mm, well, good for them. Now, uh, so your dad didn't curse at all. Not really. No, um, we might get a we might get a GD every once in a, a while, chick? and maybe an S. Your dad? Uh yeah, he he cuss. Yeah. Which were the big ones? Uh, F, um, G, GD quite often. Mm -hmm. Use the B word. Okay, maybe we should just move on. Josh, uh, your dad, a Rarely. Vietnam combat veteran. Yeah, but around us, you know, he had four young boys in the house, and my mom didn't particularly swear a lot. So yeah, no, he didn't cuss very often, but when he did, he would use whatever was available. I remember <laughs> I remember He had, a, he had the cloud. <laughs> yeah. when, when I was a kid, the whole family, the three of us, decided to stop cursing, so we had a cuss jar. Really? And every time you said you had to put a quarter in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we had a swear jar for a little bit, yeah. too. And you ended up going uh, to Hawaii with that money. Yeah, and <laughs> first class. $98,000 later, we had... <laughs> I well. just, can I ask everybody really quickly, Tom, uh, uh, because it, it was unheard of 
in a black household, were you guys allowed to curse in front of your parents? No oh, way. No. Not, not a thought. No, no okay, it was never. No. It was just old school. Oh, yeah. I can remember to this day, and I remember nothing, the moment I said the F word in front of my mom, we were shopping. I was in, I would probably say junior high school, and I said, I'm not wearing that effing skirt. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Holy hell! So it's like the famous scene in A Christmas Story. Yeah. Yes. Where he loses the bolts. Or the and you know that feeling? Yeah, that feeling you get, you went, oh my gosh, what did I just do? She didn't mention it. We just kept on going. I was probably 21 before, really? I, before I cursed in front of my parents. And did you yeah. did you kind of dip your toe into the water to see what would happen? Yeah, and when nothing was happening, I went, okay, I can, I can throw these around. <laughs> I, but I could not I could not get away with GD. My mom, no. uh, my mom would not That's that's really a bad one for me too. Yeah, so yeah, that's on the radio. That one will get more letters than I try BF. not to. I try not mm -hmm. to say that one actually. Honestly. Again, again I, I don't know why. My favorite. The well, probably because your it was your. Yeah, now I, I tell you what, I, Al. This is semi interesting. My sisters lived in England for whatever forty plus fifty years, and so there are certain curse words over there that are a little bit different, used a little more often. And I was standing <laughs> in the kitchen. This wasn't too too many years ago, and my sister was telling some story and. Um, the uh, the uh, C word, you know, the one that the sometimes one. Yeah. is an anatomical in the yes. reference. And I can remember that my, my mom's kitchen had this one of those doors that swings both ways. You'd, and I just remember very slowly backing is up. Is that code for something? And, no, 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 no. It's code for me being able to back up and go to leave the room <laughs> when Jenny said that word. In and front I, of, her, in front and of I your heard mom. my mom go, does that mean what I think it means? I, you know something? I'm leaving. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's used in a much different way. In the the C word is such a weird one because, you know, obviously I worked for the BBC, uh, hosted a show, uh, 100 episodes. So I, I was over in England a lot in my summers. And that gets thrown and, around a lot in the UK. And it I, that's that's not a big word. Uh, right. My buddy Jim Jeffries uses it as almost like uh, just an adjective to set other things up. Mm. Whereas over here, that would start a fight in a bar immediately. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just so weird. But that's not a big, big deal over there. But I think it, it does. I think people from overseas they kind of do lean on it because American audiences love to hear it because we don't we don't really say it to each other. No. Know? Now let's get no. to some new words. We're talking with uh, comedian Al Jackson. Oh, I got uh, some good ones. Oh, Al, did your uh, did your steaks arrive yet? Oh, Tom, I'm glad you mentioned it. Marinated. My first steak last night in a little Worcestershire sauce. Oh, it was yeah, awesome. delicious. Put the Omaha steak special spices on it. Throw some D's on it. Uh, <laughs> all right, those, uh, they got there quick. Yeah, they were here. I uh, ordered those. What is today? I Thursday. I ordered those for you on Sunday, so that's Man. great. You know what's weird is like this is only for men. I'm sorry, Christy. I want you to to, okay, know our, to know our plight. Whenever your girl sends a text that has got a picture with it and it says, "What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> the, the picture hasn't come through yet, so you're just like, "Please don't be panties." Please don't be panties. Yeah. <laughs> and it was Omaha steaks, and so I was very, very happy. But it's so scary because, like, especially when you're a guy that's not doing anything, you're like, "I." I, I refuse to get in trouble. Like, I'm not even doing anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Although it would be I awfully funny if a giant cooler of panties had arrived. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm would sure be... there are places you can order that from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But why would you have to have them refrigerated? What is this? Yeah. And you don't see the picture yet. You're already writing. That's not your hair clip? <laughs> yeah. In your head, oh no, who's Instagram picture yeah. that I like? So well, we, sent, uh, we sent Al some Omaha steaks. I'm glad they got there so quick. Oh, thank you uh, so now, much. We've got time for just a couple new words, uh, uh, Try me here. Go ahead, Al. Tom, I love this one. This is kind of from my, when I was still alive inside my <laughs> mid-20s. Uh, <laughs> sure. And uh, a lot of guys used to use this. And uh, I'll just give you the word. And you tell me, like, what context uh, would be happening if I said, uh, you know, what what would it mean to somebody if you said, let's get to Pollyan, P-O-L-Y apostrophe N. Oh, I, have an, I have an idea. Uh, Ooh, talk, talk, let's start talking about this. Hmm. Talking about it? Yeah, like Polly Wanna That's Cracker, it. talking parrot. Oh, really? I think, well, yeah, it, wow. it, you know, it's interesting. You guys got the right answer from kind of the wrong root because Polly and is like, it comes from the another slang. It's slang for another slang term, which is politicking. 
So oh, you could say I was going with you know, pollinating. Get, and I was doing something totally different. Oh, <laughs> no, politicking is like you think about politicians. They're always kind of giving stump speeches at sure, weird yeah, diners. Right. So it's just like, oh, <laughs> you, oh, you know, me and Tom, we got to politicking, and we looked up in an hour gone by. So then poly and is just kind of a short for that. But you guys got it completely right. No matter, it's like when your math teacher says, "Show your work," and you're like, "I got the right answer. Leave me alone." <laughs> you got oh, the right yeah. answer. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, give me one more, one more, Al. All right, Tom, we got this. Tom, if a if a Gen Zer just text you the letter W, what are they saying? Wow. Oh. Um not wow, but that's a good guess. I wonder if Willie knows this. Willie Willie remains stoic. Um so I, I would think W would either be a reference to winning something, like we got the W, or just short for what's up. Because I've used like W-Y-A for like where you at so maybe it's just short for that. Yeah, that's what I hope it is because I tweeted that uh, Tuesday morning <laughs> just the W that the Redskins had won. No, the Redskins had won. Oh, know. Chick, I thought that was a W for Willie. I thought that was I was going to guess where, where are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Willie and I... Oh, wait a minute. I know what it is. Wait a minute because I, I just remember what it, it means you're welcome. What? Uh, all right. That's good guess. <laughs> no, if, if you say if you say thank you to someone, Ooh, you get a of, you get a W I, back. I've never I heard that before. Like that. Yeah, I, I get like that. I get that all the time. Really? I, I, it's it's yeah. Willie and no, Chick you don't. I do. For the, no. By accidental win, it is for you. Just write the word win, and so you could say, uh, "Oh, Tom, yeah, I had to get up for the show this morning. I, my alarm didn't go off, but I got up anyway." W, like that's a win for me. Like I. Oh, no. oh okay. Crazy. So it does mean. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So you guys were correct. So I am impressed. Chicky coming out of nowhere. Yeah. 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 Proud Where, of you, bruh. Who <laughs> sends you a W for welcome? Has to be one person. Um. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Because I I'm very polite and and, and when I I'm. Is it your lover? No, it's my assistant. She always says, oh, I'll say thank you. Oh. She'll say W. Oh, that's gotcha. nice. Yeah, cool. Okay. Oh, um, so, uh, yeah, oh. that's me. I love a good you're welcome. I love it. Yeah, yeah I do, too. You never hear it's it. polite. I know. I use it all you the time. You never hear it. I try I to encourage do it. Listen, yes. listen to every interview on NPR. It always ends up with thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's very easy it's, to go, you're thank welcome, you thank you. No yeah. one ever says you're I know. welcome. No, no, I know. It's terrible. You. And I type it out, too. You're welcome. Yeah, me, too. I don't go with W. No. I don't like I don't like adults that type you are welcome. That's just weird to me. That I like is exactly. I stopped like doing that uh, because Prince did it all the time and it pissed me off. <laughs> 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 nothing compares to the you, numeral two. Yeah, yeah, nothing nothing oh. ruins a good song like doing something that looks so dated <laughs> yeah. two years later. Uh, well, um, don't forget too legit to quit though. The two is right, and you'd be proud of us, Al. We introduced uh, Tom yesterday to Lil John and the East Side Boys. Yes. What? He does not care for it at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll the window. Al, Al, Al the what does wall. it mean? Al, what does it mean when I text you H? <laughs> does that mean hate? I'm a hater. Hate. <laughs> Al, this weekend I'm going to show them the Ying Yang Twins. I'll get back to you. <laughs> oh, please. Hey, Al. Like, uh, Willie, skeet, skeet, record skeet, that. Skeet, skeet. <laughs> record the. Yeah, we'll do a reaction video. Hey, Dad, how do you like Three Six Mafia? Yeah. It'll be Fun. What does skeet hey, skeet the, mean? Uh, um, completion, we'll completion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get a towel. Oh. Yeah. Get a towel. Oh. Al okay, Jackson's sorry. book is called Where is Baby Ford? And you can get uh, Where is Baby Ford by going to, where do you get it again? Do you go to aljackson.com? Just go to good old fashioned Al Jackson Live. Uh, my oh, website. that's it. Yeah, AlJacksonLive.com. Thank you, Al. And uh, it's a it's a benefit uh, for the um, Lakewood County Firefly Autism Program. Very good. Thanks, Al. It's always a Bye, great pleasure. Al. Talk to you next week. Love you, kids. Love you. See you next week. Thanks for the stakes. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> I sent Al some. Oh, those got there quick. I sent those over. That's the great. Weekend. Yeah, well, Kostaki got his too. He's already cooked one. Wow. Yeah. I can't say that word either. Worcester. Worcestershire? Do you say Worcestershire or Worcestershire? Sure, I say Worcestershire. I say Worcestershire. I say Worcester, because isn't, isn't the city in Massachusetts Worcester? Worcester? Yeah. Well, well, I in England, though. but it's still, yeah. Uh, it's still the point is, that's going to lead to our next discussion. We're getting a lot of oh, word boy. stuff today. Most mispronounced words for 2020. Oh, I love this stuff. Yeah. No. Well, it's, then you can read you'll the story. Be stunned <laughs> when, you'll be stunned when you read the first I'm gonna one. Because I'm going to make a fool of myself. Because apparently, if you if you, if you if you mispronounce the first one, you've never watched the news that's this year. That's true. <laughs> Right now, I want to remind you that it's been a weird year, and uh, the only the only people it's been a really good year for are uh, cyber criminals. Ugh. Just ask the FBI. Uh, there's all kinds.
kinds of stuff going on out there. Be very careful. You've heard this a million times. I'll tell you one more time. Be very careful what you open up. Oh, this looks like it's from a friend of mine. Click. And the next thing you know, your computer's got all kinds of stuff in there that's ruining your life. Uh, also, you got to be real careful about all the stuff you've typed in there. Think about how many times you've typed in credit cards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, uh, it can lead to identity theft. It happens a lot. And if you don't want to be a victim of that, well, you can do some things to protect yourself. The best one is LifeLock. And I've been doing this for a long time. You go to lifelock.com, and uh, it's very it's very quick. You can get this organized very good. It's also very inexpensive. Uh, LifeLock is designed to detect a wide range of identity threats. Like, for example, your social security number for sale right now on the dark web. Cheap. Uh, these can cause huge problems in your life. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses, but LifeLock is there to... What's the word I'm looking for? Keep you warm and safe and friendly and sleep well this holiday season because LifeLock's watching out for your stuff. Save up to 25% off the already very low price on your first year. Go to LifeLock.com or call 1-800-LIFELOCK. Promo code TOM25 for 25% off. Remember that. 25% off LifeLock.com. Do it today. You don't want to be calling the FBI for help. Believe me. Now, when we come back, we have um, a hilarious story about something happening in prisons in Mississippi. <laughs> You're really going to like this, and it, it's almost a sports story. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Check out the Bob and Tom Show on Facebook. Get the link at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time <laughs> if this is a part. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. We're on through a Thursday morning, December 10th. Yes, we're here live, socially distanced, keeping away from each other because we're all sick, dirty people. But we like to laugh and have fun, and we're glad you're here with us on Bob and Tom 24-7. And we'll have more of the Bob and Tom show coming up right after this. I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom Sports Update. The NFL's medical director says all protocols were followed when the Ravens wide receiver Des Bryant pulled from the field before the 34-17 win over Dallas on Tuesday night. Bryant initially had an inconclusive test for COVID prior to warm-ups, but an ensuing test came up positive and caused him to set out a game against his former teammate. Dr. Sills said he made the final determination that there were no high-risk close contacts to the case, so there was no need to remove any other player. Former ABC baseball play-by-play -play announcer and now NFL Sunday Night Football announcer Al Michaels has been voted the Ford C. Frick Award for Broadcast Excellence 
by the Baseball Hall of Fame. And in college basketball last night, Michigan State at Virginia, Sam Houston at Houston, Robert Morris at West Virginia, UT Martin at Tennessee, and Louisville at Wisconsin all postponed or canceled. In games that were played, Baylor, Wisconsin, Texas, Texas Tech, Richmond, and Florida State all win. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Wild giant pandas oh, roll around in horse manure to help keep warm. Now, you roll and poop just to mask the B.O., right, Josh? Uh, that's right. My body odor is so <laughs> offensive, yeah. I roll in feces. <laughs> Why is your body odor so offensive, Josh? Well, I eat a lot. Yeah. When one is fat, they sweat. Yeah. And they often don't bathe because it's physically difficult. <laughs> that's right. I can barely fit in my home let alone my tub. I have to go out in the backyard where a team of men with <laughs> giant brushes on sticks scrub me down Much like a like circus <laughs> elephant. Oh, that's what Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Brigham All Broadcasting presents another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Beautiful Katerina Witt of East Germany became a household name in women's figure skating after her gold medal performance at the 1984 Winter Games in Sarajevo. Four years later, at the Calgary Games, she successfully defended her title. Then, ten years after that, in 1998, she posed naked in Playboy magazine, mm. a move which critics said severely tarnished her image and marketability. Men throughout the world were outraged. <laughs> if Katerina were going to pose nude, why had she not done it in 1988 when we were all fascinated by what she must look like with her clothing? Yeah. To wait 10 years after her physical prime, when we had all clearly moved on to Nancy Kerrigan, <laughs> was a slap in the face to male fans everywhere and goes against the very spirit of the Olympic Games. Yes. Hello, Michelle Kwan, are you listening? 847 Q95, it's the Bob and Tom Show. That is correct, and that is Christy Lee, and she's got an update in the weather forecast. Thanks to the Car X people, we'll have sunshine 58 today, partly cloudy down to 40, and then clouds roll in tomorrow with a high near 60, 32 and sunshine. Thank you very much, Christy. Some cool stuff to do would include the state fairgrounds, the Christmas Nights of Lights. Got a nice letter saying how much they enjoyed that at the state fairgrounds. Again, the Chick McGee recommendation, go when it's dark. Thank you, Chick. Yep. Uh, Q95.com for some more information about that. Be sure to have the kids uh, use the facility prior to going. Was there uh, an issue? Did mm. you have to use a bottle? Uh, no, I, I did not. <laughs> I, the, the, we just got a nice letter from someone who enjoyed it very much but said a little tip. <laughs> little tip from the top. Uh, also, I'll remind you that this evening, our show Bob and Tom Tonight is featured on My Indie TV 23 at 1130. Uh, so check it out. See what kind of shirt Josh is wearing today. I think it's very nice. Thanks. Looking very handsome today, Josh. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Uh, today it's been our uh, our cursing day. I'm talking about uh, everybody's favorite curse words because of a new Netflix special about that topic featuring Nicolas Cage. Uh, we have Ace Cosby, of course, over there. There's Chick. I'm Tom. That's Josh. There's Willie. And then through the through the glass, I see Christy Lee. Hi. So cursing is supposedly a really bad thing. Do you think it's a really bad thing? I think if you sparingly, okay. um, usually the first mistake made by anyone who does a podcast. Yeah. is they curse constantly, or anyone who switches to satellite radio, that's the first oh, thing they yeah. do. <laughs> Paid uh, off, apparently. F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F. <laughs> uh, Not everybody, but no. many, many. Christy, have you ever referred to your time of the month as the curse? <laughs> no, I've never done that. Have you ever heard that, though? Oh, I have heard that, do you go yes. with the, What do you go with? The painters are in... 
Uh, I'm on my period. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably... Aunt, Aunt Martha's in town? No, be, I never did anything no like that. No, disguise. A red tide at Tuna Lagoon. Oh, no, my time of the month. <laughs> Welcome to the boom town. Is, you know, something see, like this that. this is where guys get involved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm so proud of myself. I just thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I call a, it now? Yeah. History. Uh, okay. Taking a... <laughs> great line, Christy. <laughs> taking a quick rest on the uh, I don't have to worry sea. about it. Uh, Thank God. Okay, we have. Uh, yeah, we were talking about curse words because of this uh, Netflix special coming up. Visiting mm -hmm. the burning bush. Okay, we, <laughs> oh, we, oh, oh, we've, we've, moved, we've, moved, we've moved on. I see. He's making a biblical. Um, uh, um, uh, Mr. Barry writes uh, this uh, this email. Bob and Tom at bobandtom.com. Since my time in the United States Navy, my favorite curse word is F stick. Yeah, it's oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that oh. word, you know whose favorite word that is? Who? Uh, Drew Hastings. He says, oh, really? really? Drew he Hastings. Says, I was in the green room, sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> he walks in. He's pretty familiar with me at the time. Right? And I go, hey, Drew, good to see you, man. He goes, hey, F-stick. <laughs> Except he said the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. first time I ever heard that was in the Shawshank Redemption. I think oh. me too, I think. I've yeah. never heard that. Normally, when uh, Drew meets uh, teenagers, he'll look at them and go, Now, I have a satchel that I'm going <laughs> to need you to deliver. <laughs> there might be some <laughs> illegal substances. We've got tonight. a great letter from Nate at uh, Bob and Tom at Bob and Tom .com. He writes, High school football coach. I think we can yeah. all take it from there. His high school football coach, notorious for getting fired up. <laughs> yes. His favorite thing to say was... <laughs> Son of a sea biscuit, Judas Priest. <laughs> to this day, I find myself doing this. Oh, I love it. That's a pretty good one. I, I've never heard that. Son Mine is, my go-to is Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. I always say that one. Mm. Jesus, yeah. Mary, and Joseph. I mean, but it, you but you, you cringe at GD, and they're essentially... I know, it's essentially, and it's terrible. I know, I, it's I horrible. Like, I also like uh, Jesus Christ at a chicken basket. I like that. You like <laughs> I've never heard that, that before. Then, you go, yeah. Jesus Christ Superstar. And yeah, I've done that. Mm -hmm. you know? Here we go. Uh, this is from Steve. My dad rarely cussed. <laughs> if he did it in front of us, he got the riot act from my mom. Yeah. Uh, However... That's why oh he comes because of my mom. <laughs> Isn't mom, that interesting? Oh. He was in construction. One day we surprised him at the jo at the job site. Ooh. <laughs> this isn't that. As we were approaching the corner of the building, uh, he didn't see us. And I heard him say, you effing son of a GD blue-eyed B-word. Oh. <laughs> blue-eyed is the best part of that. Wow. It's poetic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a poem. Yeah, that must be that must be one of his go-tos. That's so great. <laughs> and then he saw us and he goes, do not tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> so those are great. Those are great. I that's was I was online. Wonderful. There was there's an entire scientific study with maps of the United States yeah. and the individual curse words and where they're popular. It's oh. really interesting. Huh. Now, weren't you on a, or you at least had a friend on a construction site? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, this is one of my favorites. We were, um, uh -huh. we were doing us. Uh, the 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 basement had been uh, the, the the basement had been dug. Right. And uh, this is my friend Pete, um, and um, who's a b absolutely brilliant uh, engineer, carpenter, whatever. And um, I, I was holding the stick. And he was across the way, across the big hole with the telescope thing. Yeah. You were yeah. surveying the... Yeah. Right. And we were at... Uh, Just we, you and Pete. Yeah? Yeah. At the time, absolutely. <laughs> and um, uh, <laughs> yep. this this house was in the middle of the woods, but on, on a lake. So it was this beautiful piece of property. You're taking very, very accurate measurements. And, but I'm, I'm the idiot yeah. holding the stick. Right. 20 yeah. years old. I have no idea what I'm doing. And I'm holding the stick. And um, this house was being built for a, uh, uh, it was the summer, uh, the, being built at the summer home for a, a reverend oh. mm -hmm. and his wife. Very nice. Uh, uh, the pastor, actually. <laughs> and um, I'm holding the thing, and I can see behind Pete, the people have parked their car and are walking up. He doesn't see them. <laughs> and this is just like out of a movie. And the people are the... The, the reverend. The pastor and his wife. And, right. and, and his wife. <laughs> And Pete wants me to move the stick. Uh huh. And he's screaming at the top of the, his lungs. <laughs> I can't say exactly. A C hair to the right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he didn't say C. Did he did he? not. No. Ooh. 
Yes. That means only a little bit, Christy. Right. Right. I know what it means. <laughs> love it. Love it. Oh, love it. God, I've, every, every, one of the every word of that is true. Uh, boy, oh boy. And did they just act like they didn't hear it? No, it got very awkward. <laughs> they, they acted like they didn't hear it. I was playing golf one time with one of my favorite priests, and uh, he doesn't look like a priest. He wasn't dressed like a priest. And we got, f you know, sometimes you go to the golf course, you're a twosome. They put you up with another twosome. And we were <laughs> with these two guys, and they were cursing up a storm. Storm. And I let it go till about the fourth hole. And then I was getting ready to putt. And I go, oh, I'm sorry, Father. I'm a, a little bit closer to the hole than you are. You need to go first. And these guys never said another curse for the rest of the day. It was beautiful. Yeah, it's, I like love that, it. it's like that great scene in the Blues Brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, see the, they see the nun all of a sudden. The penguin. Oh. Yeah. Ow! And did you see that that movie is on the um, on that uh, the Vatican's list of uh, of recommended films? Sure, sure, sure yeah. they do it all. They're on a mission from God. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. is a, that movie is unique, a very unusual classic. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, well, thank you very much. We'll, we'll uh, move on. We have a bunch of requests to get to, and uh, we, oh gosh, we have that uh, a really interesting story about prisons in Mississippi that you're I, Chick, it's almost a sports story, wouldn't you say, Christy? Almost. I didn't give it to Chick, but I, I guess I could have. Do no. you want to do it here real quick? Nope. I want to wait. because we, right. we, We've got that. And we've got a, a Mount Everest in the news all coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Keep us with you at all times. Get the Bob and Tom app now at your app store. State law. Listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Don't, 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 don't. The essential morning radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom 24 7. 24 7. Let me tell you about the Bob and Tom app. It's free. It's available at the iTunes or Google Play Store. Do you know someone who might like the Bob and Tom Show app? You should tell them about it. Once they download it on their phone, they can listen to their local station. Tune in to Bob and Tom 24-7. Even listen to our Bob and Tom Show free podcast just right there on the app. Even set an alarm that'll wake you up with the show. How cool is that? The Bob and Tom Show app. Download it today. It's free. I'm Mark Allison from the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk with a Bob and Tom News update. Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine faces one final hurdle before an expected decision to greenlight the shot for use in millions of Americans. 
Food and Drug Administration advisors meet today to scrutinize the company's data for any red flags or oversights. The public review comes as UK regulators investigate two apparent cases of allergic reaction to that vaccine. Safety, the top of mind for the panel of medical experts who will vote on whether to endorse the vaccine. They'll also address unknowns about the vaccine's effectiveness in certain groups. A final FDA decision and the first shots could follow within days. Lawmakers embracing a one-week extension of government funding to buy time for more COVID-19 relief talks. The House on Wednesday easily passed a temporary funding bill that sets a December 18th deadline for Congress to wrap up both a virus relief measure and a $1.4 trillion government spending bill. The Senate expected easily pass the bill before midnight Friday to avert a partial government shutdown. Meanwhile, meanwhile, negotiations continue over another round of virus aid. Haven't we heard this before? Leaders in agreement about helping small businesses and preserving extra unemployment benefits, but disagree over the details of the package. Just get it done. The Justice Department investigating the finances of President-elect Joe Biden's son, including scrutinizing some of his Chinese business dealings and other transactions, according to a person familiar with the matter who spoke to the AP Wednesday. Revelations put a renewed spotlight on questions about Hunter Biden's financial history, which dogged his father's successful White House campaign and were a frequent target of Donald Trump and his allies. They also come at a politically delicate time for the president-elect, who's weighing his choice to lead an agency that is actively investigating his son. 2020, everyone, catch it. That's your news update. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Bob and Tom, it's Kenny Thomas. <laughs> I can't. Big news in this camp, cowboy. What? Big news. <laughs> yeah, I just tested positive for going above and beyond for my clients. Oh, <laughs> that's very clever. Oh, for a second. All right. I've lost all taste of smell, unless it's the aroma of free shipping through December 28th. Oh, wow. <laughs> for renewal uh, for first-time clients. And I've lost my sense of taste. Especially when I look at the sample cases from our competition. <laughs> oh, I see. That's fine. Oh, this is going to kill the next one. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. The next time you're traveling, don't forget about the historical... The clock, Q95, it's the Bob and Tom Show. Some great stuff coming up, including a chat with the famous Mr. Skin. Also, we have some cool NASA news, uh, and uh, right now, we have a quick forecast from Christy Lee. Always a good one. Sunshine, 58, thanks to the car X people. Partly cloudy down to 40, and then tomorrow, we'll see clouds, but it'll still be warm. Near 60 degrees, 32 right now. Relatives coming over, perhaps you need this message from Chick McGee. 21st, some men. Happy holidays! Wine, spirits, and beer. 21st Amendment. Proud to be serving Central Indiana for almost 50 years. That means big savings for you, especially around the holidays. 21st has the lowest prices on Jim Beam. 1.75 liter, now only twenty four ninety seven. dollars How about a perfect gift? 21st Amendment will put together what you want and deliver it to your home this holiday season. They have great gift packages for any budget, and everyone loves some holiday cheer from 21st. For, for, yeah, like Kendall Jackson Chardonnay. Have you already been there? 750 maybe. Uh, only nine ninety seven. And Sam Adams, the 12, just fourteen ninety seven. And download the 21st Amendment app today. Don't listen to Drunk Me. Do it now. And Happy holidays from the 21st Amendment family to yours. 21st Amendment. Amendment. Just minutes from I did it again. Anywhere. <laughs> Your mom ever said, beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Get it? Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Very obscure. Uh, welcome back to the program. Let's see. at the uh, There's Ace Cosby at the OmahaSteaks.com. Uh, joke desk. Al Jackson got those steaks ready. So did Kostaki. I wonder if Reno got his. We'll find out. Uh, the Josh is a clapping away. Thank you, Josh. You're very welcome. Josh, of <laughs> course, is at the uh, IHateStevenSinger.com sidekick desk and oh, chair. Oh, is he? Is he? Ah, his own little sponsor. Really? Yeah, uh, but Chip I'm the one with the nice necklace. Sorry, Josh. Look at that. Oh, wow. Well, you got their well, pearls? Uh, Thank you, no, Steven Singer. No, it's a star. It's <laughs> beautiful you want a pearl diamonds. Uh, hey. Come on. Step up. Uh, come on. Willie? No, we're not those guys. <laughs> Thank you, I hate Steven Singer. Yeah, we can do better. Uh, Chip McGee at the sports desk. This is Tom. There's Willie. We've been discussing cursing this morning because of a new Netflix special all about cursing. F and A. One word at a time. 
Uh, but, uh, yeah, we have uh, found uh, some very interesting things. Do you remember that uh, Fred Ward as Gordo Cooper in The Right Stuff? Oh, yeah. He's F&A Bubba. That's what he said through the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's great. Yeah. I'm sure very accurate as well. Yes. Uh, now. Um, uh, are we going to have Chick do this, or are you going to do it, Christy? What? The, the Mississippi no, story. No, I have it. Okay. Yeah, she's got it. I, I say we, we both do it, and each take one word, so it would be like, well, yesterday. In, the. Oh, uh, let's, I love this game. Tom, you want to do that? Absolutely yeah. not. Okay. <laughs> So uh, create your own story, right? <laughs> like Improv 101 again. The prison football team may be getting a new quarterback. Prison in Mississippi has been confiscating a lot of things that had been thrown over the prison fence inside footballs. Oh. Like cell phones, marijuana, and chicken wings, Willie. <laughs> oh, gotta love that. I mean, these guys are geniuses. According to officials at South Mississippi Correctional Institution, the footballs and other packages cleared the double 18-foot high fences around 1.30 a.m. on Monday. They were detected by the prison's sensing technology. Well, finally, Johnny Menzel got a gig. <laughs> <laughs> the contraband was split into 25 packages, which included 38 cell phones, cigars, 20 pounds of tobacco and rolling papers, four pounds of marijuana, <laughs> and seven pounds of barbecued chicken wings. Wow. Isn't that great? Authorities oh are God. searching for a vehicle that was used to bring the items to the But prison. First of all, it's hilarious that they're putting them, stuffing them inside footballs. Right. Yeah. Smart move. Sure. But I mean, can you imagine you're taking the order? Okay. I got it, Spike. You want cell phones? Check. Tobacco? Check. Pot? Check. Chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. My favorite wing place is up in Chicago. I haven't been there in months, and I crave it. I crave sure, that specific I flavor. Did you drive up there three weeks ago just for that. Just and then drove it. back. Yeah, it was great. Good for you. Six <laughs> hours to get chicken wings. Uh, awesome. Christy, the, in the car, these are the best chicken oh, wings in the whole world. Wow. Have you heard? There's a great Jimmy Buffett song where Jimmy is a is a expert pilot. Yeah, I heard that song where he flies. His, I think he flies to Jamaica. Just the, he, he's flying with some friends to get lunch. There's cool. some, some great restaurant. He starts to land and they start shooting at him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, sure, I. that makes sense. But apparently football's hmm. not banned in prison hmm. because... Uh, well, no, these the, 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 these guys figure the best way to get this stuff in there is to throw, throw it over the fence. Over the What's going to be easier feet. to throw than a football? Yeah. So... Um, I, I think it's a, it's a great move, but I guess... Well, this, not too great, because they got caught. Well, if you read down the... It, they apparently have all kinds of new electronic sensors. Yeah. So when something breaks the plane, it, it goes off. Well, it's because drones. Remember, they were using drones there for a while, dropping God. stuff in. A football full of chicken wings. <laughs> that just makes you smile, Well, but it? that... Uh, you, it would mix the sauce on them as the ball spins, right? Yeah, oh, exactly. You're just going to yeah. toss them. <laughs> this yeah. innovation, it would provide a very... Loose toss. Ooh. Exactly. That's a, that's a now, wing term I use. Yeah, now, oh, okay. throwing a football with a... Wait a minute. i got to think this through. Throwing a football... Because you said there were 38 cell phones. Yes. So you've got a football with some cell phones inside. Right. So if somebody on the other side caught it, you'd have two reasons to say... <laughs> Good reception. Oh, God. Anybody? No. no. Yeah, no. yeah, no, too no. Too much work? Anybody. No. Not too much work? Uh, it's just not there. Well, it's there. It's Christy, just... it's just not there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Johnny Manziel finally got a gig. Yeah. God, that would, that would make the story funny if that were really true. <laughs> oh, it's sad. He, what was I just reading? He, was, he won the Heisman Trophy as a freshman mm -hmm. and fizzled oh, out that quickly. Man. Does he have a chance of, of ever coming back? Because if he gets himself sorted out. I don't think out, so. There's no way to answer that question. How can you be that good and then not be that good? I don't Is it know. just the difference between college and pro? Well, there's, there's a big difference. That's okay. for sure. Well, anyway, I just think that's so cool that the guys in, in the... Maybe, could we make arrangements to send them some chicken wings legally? Mm. I don't know. That not would be so. kind of nice, huh? Just a hey. day. Aww. Yeah. Hey, you guys are doing your time. The Bob and Tom chicken Show want to send you some chicken wings. Here's, a, here's oh, an idea. We'd be Let's heroes. not get involved with prisons. What do you think? <laughs> I think we that? should broadcast from one like Johnny Cash. Uh, we have. Oh. oh, no kidding. Yeah. Inside? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, let's do it again. I don't remember that. Uh, remember the, we were playing it was softball? A, it was a ladies' prison. Yeah, I think prison. it was before my time. Okay, well, uh, oh, let's all, go to a ladies' all, prison. All nine women on the other team, all the starters were murderers. 
Wow. Absolutely. You talk about murderers row. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do it. That's a baseball joke. Anybody get that? Anybody, yes, anybody? yes. We got, Jake, we're, we are we get that. <laughs> Wouldn't have been murderers bench. Uh, no, they were playing. 27 oh. Yankees were known as murder. murder uh, thank you very much. Oh. Well, Someone yeah. dated. Uh, it's only... Uh, uh, it's only in a hundred years ago, almost. It's well, certainly yeah. one of the classic teams. I, uh, okay. Well, uh, Christy, what else have you got? We have science in the news. Mount Everest has gotten taller. Mm. Authorities in China and Nepal have agreed this week that the new standard height for Mount Everest is 29,031.7 feet. Yeah, they know. Which is slightly more than Nepal's previous measurement and about 13 feet higher than China's. They borrowed that new tape measure I got. Yeah. Really? That baby. Is it a laser? Is long. Oh. No, no, no. Just a long, <laughs> long tape. So what you're saying is. <laughs> so anecdotal. A guy. <laughs> exactly. We stood on top and got a, a tape, tape measure, measure and ran it down one side of the no, mountain. I, as you know, I'm in the process of building a major project. And yes. So I, I bought myself one of those big tape measures. Yes. <laughs> With the uh, reel? No, 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 no. Okay. No, you, no, the kind where you can press the button and it goes. Shoo. But oh, it's really yeah, that long. Oh, God, hey, Josh. The Mount Everest is tall. You know how tall it is? How tall uh, about is half it? the length of a CVS receipt. Hey! 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 I missed that. Half the length. The new measurement was agreed on after surveyors from Nepal scaled the peak in 2019, and a Chinese team did the same in 2020. Everett's height was first determined by a British team uh, about around 1856 at 29,002 feet. They weren't too far off. They the were only off by 29 feet. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. The mountain's height does change over time. With earthquakes can bring it down and shifting to tonic plates that can lift it up. So You know, you know why it went up, Christy? Why? It was measured by a man. <laughs> yeah. There you go. More inches, uh... <laughs> Let's round that up. He said, make sure to measure when it's not cold. <laughs> Shrinkage. Didn't you, when you were a kid, love a tape measure that when you press the button? I still love a tape measure. And it comes back in. But boy, when you, when you, that first pinch, though, that yeah. you go, oh, I better not play with this the thing. The technology's gotten better. This is absolutely true. Every time I go to the hardware store, I get a tape measure. Every single time. So what, are you sitting on 40 tape measures? There, it got to be more than that. I have tons of tape measures. Huh. I don't but, know why. There's a fair question. What do you have the most of in your junk drawer? I know the answer for me. Tape measures and uh, crazy glue. Uh, drill bits. Crazy glue. Crazy oh. glue. Power it's like driver. you use it once and then you keep it and you put it in your drawer for two days and all of a sudden it's all dried yes. up. Yeah. You can never it use it again. <laughs> Exactly. The caps suck and they know it and they're well, you it's a have racket. to put the cap back. I on. put it back on so well. In yeah. fact, I <laughs> you I do. crazy glue the cap back on. <laughs> <laughs> That'll fix them. I think I have 50 spoons. I have every spoon he's ever gotten rid of in one drawer. I'm, I'm, oh. I mean, I have so many spoons, it's insane. Really? I have pink spoons. I have cartoon spoons. I have square spoons. <laughs> you have uh, bent spoons, spoons that look burnt. Yeah. Were, you there, were you there when we got in the... <laughs> Who gets a square From spoon? From my Elliot Smith phase, yes. <laughs> Do you have a cartoon spoon of the moon? Oh. No, or I've is got that like... coming soon? I've got... Okay, Very the rhyme game. Very good. <laughs> my favorite uh, spoon joke is the great Woody Allen joke. Is it, I've got a... Uh, the, the, the couple got married. I, I got them, uh, they're, they're, they're uh, heroin addicts. <laughs> <laughs> so I got them a silver set, all spoons. Very <laughs> all spoons. Oh, you see, there's a, oh, yeah. Remember this famous spoon argument we got into in Michigan? Oh, yeah, when we, we stated that. Oh, God. At, uh, at, the uh, famous spoon argument, Chick. <laughs> Lucia's house. Here we go. No, I, I was talking, I was saying that with this house we'd rented, I said it's ridiculous if she's got more than 100 spoons. And my brother goes, no way, you're exaggerating. So my sister and I went back to the house. You I still counted have the, them. No, no, I have a photograph. Did this happen, Willie? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I have a photograph of all her spoons. I think it was like 130. Uh, okay. But this. you think that a person should not have that many spoons. According, no, yeah. Edit it down. You're not going to have 130 people over for dessert. I'm telling you, I think I have that many spoons. <laughs> well, then get, get, edit it. Okay, I'll edit it. You can come over and count my tape measures if you want. Okay. 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 We used to get, my, my mom used to collect the mini spoons from, uh, you know, those Every time you'd go someplace, sure. you could buy. Yeah. Well, and but they, now she's rich. She can buy any spoons uh, she wants. She's want. married to a man named Rich. <laughs> never funny. Not, never gotten a single chuckle. That and she had him hung up in this little thing or whatever. And uh, my brother <laughs> slept in the same room that they were in. And he said that every night at 2 a.m. on the dot, they would ch one two two spoons would hit. Just go ting. And he had, he had no idea so what's haunted. haunted. Yeah, oh, haunted cool. spoons. Wow. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> That's just weird. Yeah, it is weird. Okay. Uh, well, handy to know. Ghosts are real. So anyway, Mount Everest now is a little bit higher. 
Uh, and yeah. do not ask Mount Everest how much she weighs. That's oh, that's, that's rude. That'd, yeah. be, that'd, that'd be rude. Uh, what do we have coming up, Chick McGee? Hey, Mount Everest, when the ba- when's the baby? Chick McGee. Do? Do we have more of Christian news. Is well, what we, we have, have yeah. NASA in the news. NASA. And, and we, we have, have a Mr. doomsday Skin. plane. We have Mr. Skin. We have we'll a talk lot about coming about boobs up. and butts. Hey, hey. Talking about boobs and butts. Hey, hey. hey. Uh, talk about should we ask Mr. Skin what his favorite curse word is? Yeah. Oh, I bet I know. That is not anatomical. No, that would that I know that's hussy. You just uh, made, the ink <laughs> got wet. Um, by the way, I want to remind you that um, this is another great gift idea because uh, the best gifts are the ones where you give it to someone else and you get a huge benefit out of it. Sure they are. That's where the Sleep Number Bed comes in. The Sleep Number Bed is designed so that uh, both sides of the bed are adjustable at the touch of a button whenever you feel like it. Maybe you want a firm mattress one night, not so firm the next night, or maybe she wants a different one or whatever's going on. Ah, you get a great (laughs) night's sleep, a natural immunity booster. Good to know that, by the way. But the Sleep Number Bed is the best ever. Chick McGee, what's your Sleep Number setting? 100. Meaning what? Uh, Very firm. Firm mattress, Tom. The firmest. That's correct. Uh, Christy Lee? 35. Once again, that's the equivalent of a marshmallow. It's perfect. But this I is America, it. and that's legal. It's legal to sleep sure. on a giant marshmallow. <laughs> now, let me be very clear. The sleep member bed is it's not, not made. It's not a giant marshmallow. It's not made of marshmallows. No. Please don't write me a letter. Oh. Uh, by the way, also, sleep member has the Comfort Fit pillow. They have the oh, ultimate... Which I love. Same here. And they, this is a hard one to say. They have the ultimate faux fur throw. Faux okay. yeah. for throw. Okay. Faux for Be careful. That is hard. It's very tough to say. But it's <laughs> faux. And it's what do you use fur. that faux? Uh, I don't know. I'm not getting three. What's I'm that getting, fur? I'm not getting three. I'm getting faux. <laughs> <laughs> faux fur? A favorite of the ladies, the winter soft sheet sets. This should be a contest for uh, yeah. young broadcasters. <laughs> yeah, no joke. It's almost hard to say all this stuff. It's great stuff. I love my sleep number bed. I have the one that has the thing in the back. Where you press the button, bzzzt, and the back goes up. Oh, mm-hmm. you're lucky. You're rich. Very handy for acid <laughs> reflux. Lucky. Are you married to Josh's mom? <laughs> No, uh, save up to 700 bucks on the new Sleep Number 360 smart bed. Special financing is available. Makes a great gift. You actually oh, can give... Wait a second. Gift. I just thought of this one. What? You can give comfort and joy ah, this Christmas. Ah, nice. Wow. Anybody get that? I can. Yeah, it was very tidy. So Anybody get that? We wish you a Merry Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate. Happy Hanukkah today, by the way. Uh, Sleep Number stores. Check it out online. Sleepnumber.com slash BT show. Coming up, the famous Mr. Skin... This is the Bob and Tom Show. Essential morning radio. All day and all night. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. Rolling through Thursday, December 10th. I'm Mark Allison. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Al Jackson, we heard from him. And also celebrity skin expert, Mr. Skin. He's into celebrity nudity. Why? Why wouldn't you be? Well, mostly women, I think, on the most part. Mr. Skin zooming his way in right here on Bob and Tom 24-7 nudity. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with your Bob and Tom Entertainment News from the Navy Federal Credit Union Entertainment News Desk. The names of America's preeminent infectious disease expert and its incoming vice president have topped this year's list of most mispronounced words. Anthony Fauci and Kamala Harris are among a number of famous names that made the list released Wednesday. The U.S. captioning company, which captions and subtitles real-time events on TV and in courtrooms, has been compiling the list with Babbel, a language learning app company, since 2016. Todd Ezrin, a singer... (laughs) Easy for me to say. Todd Ezrin, a senior linguist at Babel, said the list unsurprisingly reflects a year dominated by presidential politics and the coronavirus pandemic. Police in South Florida descended on what they thought was an armed break-in at a men's clothing store Tuesday morning after people were spotted storming in with rifles but arrived to find a music video in process of filming. A Pembroke Pines police spokeswoman says the rifles were fake, the men holding them actors in a video. The Miami Herald reports a store manager says the shopping center was closed at the time and the film crew was allowed in the store. Pembroke Pines officials say the city hadn't been given a permit for the filming and the shopping center's management team says it also was not aware. Police say, however, nobody 
was charged. Police say a stash of cocaine worth up to $2 million discovered inside a trailer hauling garlic from California after staff at a Northwest Indiana Highway way station grew suspicious, perhaps hungry. State troopers called Monday to a Porter County way station along Interstate 94 after a staff member inspecting a commercial truck's trailer spotted a black case that appeared inconsistent with its load of 18,000 pounds of minced garlic. The Northwest Indiana Times reports the case contained about 50 kilos of cocaine, estimated to be worth nearly $2 million on the street. Troopers arrested two California men who were in the truck. There you have it, your entertainment news. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Is being asked to be in the wedding party. That's the yes. and buy your own thing. You got to buy your own dress, and you got to. This fly is such a guy stupid. girl thing, isn't it? This is. If I ever get married, the there will be no wedding parties. Yep. Now, Josh, have <laughs> you have you ever been in a wedding? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah plenty. Yeah, plenty. And, of... and what was your role? Ring bearer. Ring bearer. <laughs> that's right. I, I, I had <laughs> onion rings in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that's clapping. That's very now funny. he's taking credit for you saying <laughs> you know he is. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. Before we go, yeah. thought I'd tell you the true story of Susie Suzuki and Sam Samer. Now, this is the true story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. As told by yours truly, Tom, Tom Whiskey, Whiskey Frontier, Frontier Doctor. Doctor. Good morning. Well, I never will forget it. Susie Suzuki had to get married at a very young age. Yeah. Uh, she was impregnated by her husband, Hyaston. She never really liked Hyaston, but they had 12 children. Now, Hyaston up and died, and Susie remarried. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll tell you, it was really something because she married her... 920 Q95, it's the Bob and Tom show. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We're talking cursing and that guy shows up? <laughs> That's off the air. That's crazy. Uh, there's a... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. There's the master. The master. Yeah. Um, where was I? Oh, that's Christy Lee. You can see her right there. Yes. Um, and uh, Christy is going to be on the TV tonight. I am? I'm talking about my Indy TV 23, 1130. It's a show called Bob and Tom tonight. See the lovely Christy Lee. Oh, thank you. Who's about to give us a weather forecast? From the Car X Man. Sunshine 58, partly cloudy overnight, down to 40. Tomorrow, 60 degrees, 34 now. Uh, thank you very much, Christy Lee. Uh, coming up, it'll be a little bit of skin. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. As I said, we had skin coming up on the show. Okay. Not, you see my shoulder? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> I, it's, it's Mr. Skin. Not that we, we don't want to see Mr. Skin's skin, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, uh, you shut up. Uh, well, <laughs> shut up. He's a very he's handsome, a handsome man. man. He's a very handsome man. Yes. We'll get to uh, the, the legendary Mr. Skin coming up. But first, we do have uh, Christy Lee at the Navy Federal Credit Union News, Jessica. What have you got? NASA has named uh, 18 astronauts who will train for its Artemis moon landing program. And half of them are women. The first woman and the next man on the moon will come from this elite group. Hmm. Interesting. Josh, I assume you're going to say something sexist. Why would I do that? Something like uh, 18 astronauts, half are women. Well, someone's got to get the moon dust off the and console. do the dishes. 
Oh, what is wrong with you? These are good points. <laughs> Dear Bob and Tom, wait a minute. These these people, by the way, are men and women, super badass. Yes. What 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 was the figure? Eighteen hundred people for apply for yeah. every one that makes it all the way. Yeah, it's through. right. It's amazingly hard oh, to do. Yeah. And I guess they they're down to eighteen, and then uh, what did I read that? Um, oh, the talent and swimsuit competition will decide oh, who goes first. Oh, that's good. <laughs> there we go. That's right. Oh, there's the very handsome Mister Skin. Uh, see, I just said we had skin coming up, and. We weren't really hoping to see you. Um, <laughs> uh, Mr. Skin, uh, I've actually got his book right here um, called Being Mr. Skin, uh, 20 Years of Nip Slips, Cheek Peaks, <laughs> and Fast Forwarding to the Good Parts. I love that title. Um, by uh, Mr. Skin. And, and we've been talking to Mr. Skin for many, many years. And uh, Mr. Skin is fully aware that um, many, many years before there was a Mr. Skin on this show, we had a, a, a joke piece. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, in which... Um, skin Scan Remote Control, it was wasn't skin, it? Yeah, of course, it was starring Bob, and it was the Skin Scan Remote Control. And uh, it, it, would, it would automatically go to the good parts of the movies. And you ended up uh, independently thinking of that, of course, and making it a, a very nice career. Well, yeah, and I always remember Bob being so... He, he just was... Of any radio guy I'd ever been on the show, I've been doing this you know, over 20 years, no one knew nudity as well as him, which is a, a credit. I'm, I'm sure he's still proud of that to this day. But um, yeah, you know, listen, every guy, as we know, even back in the days when we used to go to video stores and you'd see a beautiful girl on the front page of a... Uh, or on the box cover, you know, we'd rent the movie without even knowing what it was. And I basically took what every guy does, which is love nude scenes, and turned it into a, a business that now is going on its 22nd year, believe it or not. Oh, and we should point out, uh, if, if any of you are watching and you can see Mr. Skin, uh, when we first spoke to you, we were assuming you were kind of a uh, kind of a pimply-faced, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I think you skin? assumed that. Basement Dweeb. goblin? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> we, we assuming a you, you, basement goblin. That's, you, I gotta write you, that one down. A, a balding fat guy that lived in his parents' basement. And and yeah. Christy, Christy, how would you describe him? He's a very Christine? handsome man. Full yeah. head of hair. He looks Not great. a Dungeons and Dragons loser at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. And actually a family, a family Thank man. You. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Believe it or not. Well, it does get awkward though. When now my daughter's uh, sixteen Ooh. and she's a ju junior in high school. She's like. You know, stuff happened like on Sunday night. Family Guy actually mentioned Mr. Skin in an original episode, which was such an honor. And like, as a, what I do for a living is like, you're proud of it, but then it's hard when you have like a 16 year old daughter to like go brag about what she, what she, what I do. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're, you know what I'm saying? It's a little tough, but it's uh, <laughs> uh, I'm yeah. pr I'm proud of it. But when you have my, my son's very proud of it. My daughter's not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Your daughters will go to away. They'll be going to college as far away as humanly possible. <laughs> yeah, they're they're not as in the nude scenes as my son is. Oh, San Diego that. State. That's kind of far away. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Uh, Chicago-based Mr. Skin. Uh, and uh, once again, you actually do have a uh, your book out uh, from last year, Being Mr. Skin. And yeah. uh, I think we should probably mention the, the uh, good fortune you had when a certain movie was being made. And then as they were making the movie, they realized that the website actually existed. Can you tell that story? Yeah. In uh, 2006, in the summer, I got a call from uh, a, a lawyer from Universal, which scared the crap out of me at the time. But then he said, listen, the guy that did... <laughs> The guy that did 40 year old virgin um, wants to put your website in his next movie. And I was smart enough to put up no roadblocks, not ask for any money, just say, do it. Where do I sign? And uh, that was the movie Knocked Up, which did about $250 million that summer of 2007. And they featured my website in it. And Be because it's one, of, one of the subplots was. That uh, one of the characters had the idea to do. Yeah, Seth Rogen. Yeah. To, yeah, yeah, Seth Rogen. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And uh, listen, I've had been so lucky that my website has become kind of part of pop culture. I mentioned um, The Simpsons. It's twice now that The Simpsons have, you know, have mentioned Mr. Skin on their show. Saturday Night Live did the movie Knocked Up, and I could name a ton of different places. And it's it's kind of cool when I when I'm done with this when I retire, uh, I will. That'll be one of the coolest things is not only you know getting to go on shows like this and and do this and how fun the job was, but the notoriety and the and and how it's become part of main 
uh, you know, mainstream media uh, is is pretty cool. And, and once again, cool. uh, once again, the, the the website involves um, just going to certain parts of, and this is major motion pictures as opposed to uh, uh, the porno, if you will. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so you know, I, I've got kind of a, I've got a, almost a quiz for you, Mister Skin, before we get to the actual reason you called, which I'm sure you're somewhat annoyed that we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> oh, no, not, uh, no, I, not uh, at all, not at all. Uh, I, I, there's a there's a TV show coming to Netflix. I don't know if it'll have any nudity, but it's with Nicolas Cage, and it's kind of a docu thing called The History of Swear Words. Yeah, I just heard of that today. We got, we, got, that. we got talking about this, and then I, so I did a little research, and I found out uh, the movies that have the most cursing in them. And it, oh, really? It, and it dawned on me, if anybody would know this, with all the movies you've had to watch, been forced to watch, or wanted to watch, you may know this one. I've got the top ten movies that had the, the largest amount of cursing, and I've heard of every one of these movies but one. They're all fairly major. Most of them were theatrical releases, but not all of them. What would your guess be as the movie that had the most cursing in it? If I had to guess, it would be a Quentin Tarantino, like a Pulp Fiction or something like that. Uh, yeah. It's a good guess, but he, that's... He is in there. That's a guess. <laughs> Not that yeah. one. Oh, for another Reservoir movie? Reservoir Dogs okay. is in there, isn't it? Reservoir Dogs is number oh, one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I had Quentin Tarantino. I just didn't have the right movie. Yeah. Um, just to save time and money here, the correct answer is The Wolf of Wall Street. 715 oh, yeah. curse words. And then in second, so in second place, uh, uh, was this was Uncut Gems a theatrical release? Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Which is um, right before all hell broke loose. Yep. A terrific movie, uh, and not not a comedy. No, with Adam Sandler, but that's second for the most swearing in it. Yeah, so. I love that movie. People ask me a lot about that girl that he had the affair with in Uncut Gems. Her name's Julia Fox. It sure is. Um, Oh my God, is she she beautiful? Uh, um, in that she's, she she hasn't done a, a nude scene. She was in a thong in that. She hasn't done a movie or television nude scene. But I've seen some modeling nudes of her, and oh my God, she's ridiculous. Yeah. And a terrific actress that just kind of came seemingly came out of nowhere. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, yes. uh, to get, uh, I'll let Mr. Skin uh, announce what he has to announce in a second here. But first, um, uh, Mr. Skin, we also I, I did some research and found the uh, the actors who have done the most swearing in films and uh, we all guess Samuel L. Jackson he's a, a distant third oddly enough the number one uh, cursing guy in the history of cinema Jonah Hill really yeah mm. uh, largely because, because of, uh, Wolf of Wall Wolf Street, of Wall Street. Yeah, but he also, he hasn't, I mean, Samuel L. Jackson's been in so many more movies, I'm surprised by that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the second place, Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, then you, you get on the list, Denzel, Billy Bob, Seth Rogen coming in eighth, and Danny <laughs> McBride coming in tenth. But anyway, speaking of lists and stuff, that sort of thing, Mr. Skin, uh, what have you got going right now? Well, we have our top ten nude scenes of the year, and um, I know that, you know, boy, it's been a crappy year, as everyone knows, with COVID-19 and the pandemic, but... I can tell you it, it's, it's been a skindemic of, of nudity. Uh, <laughs> even, with, uh, even, even with everything that happened this year uh -huh. and, and, and shows not being able to, um, you know, tape and movies being held back, um, there was so much content. And again, it was my old problem that nobody is concerned on my behalf. But I mean, it's very difficult to <laughs> narrow down the 10 best nude scenes of a year with all the platforms and all the new places you could watch movies or television shows. So I'm just seeing the I know, famous. I know no one feels sorry yeah, for that you. Mel, the Mel Brooks scene. <laughs> work, work, work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But, but um, anyway, so yeah, the, the list is right at the front page of our website. If anyone wants to check it out for free. And uh, I thought I'd go over some of the highlights with sure. you guys and, and hopefully you could see it but um like for instance number 10 people were blown away by this there was a uh, it's allison brie in a movie called horse girl now horse girl uh was a netflix original movie it was released right before the pandemic started and uh she plays a you, you know her from if you don't know the name she was annie on community from 2009 to 2015 so um she's a very famous television actress isn't now, she, she the one in, an, is she the one in uh, Burbig's movie about improv no that's brie larson that's, that's, oh, okay. that's brie, yeah Different that's another brie. one okay. but but she's yeah, anyway so she's in mad men it, Okay. She was Peter Campbell's yes. wife in Mad Men. Right. Yeah. She, um, anyway, in this movie, she plays an awkward introvert who works at a craft store. And in the climactic scene that made our top 10 list, she walks completely nude through the craft store 
And you could see that she probably crafted a merkin for herself during the scene because <laughs> that is not that is a wig she is wearing there. But everything else is her, and uh, it's it's pretty incredible seeing Alison Brie and Horse Girl. Well, we've s- we've spoken to her. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm getting yeah. my breeze mixed up. Okay. Well, the, the, <laughs> Jesus. And and the word. Uh, thank you. Jeff. You're welcome. <laughs> also, it's not Drew Breeze. So just keep it straight. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Mr. Drew Breeze would wear a merkin. Which incidentally, no. which incidentally is a pubic wig for those not familiar. Yes, yes. What an yes. odd. What a, that'd be a weird gig. Can you mention being the the go to merkin, merkin, merkin person in a Hollywood? Merkin maker. <laughs> yeah. Who? Where? Where do you go? Like, where do you go online? I'd have to look, but there's got to be a guy oh, somewhere yeah. in Hollywood that is knitting a merkin right now. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I bet there's. I bet there's like one guy. I hope they're nice guys and I'm hard to get along with. A jerkin merkin. <laughs> <laughs> That would be, uh, I, I, hate, I, I hate working with a jerk and mercy. Oh, yeah. you can't work with a jerk mayor, mayor. Well, yeah. I, I'd also think you'd hate to work in the 70s section of there. It's much more work than yeah. it would in the, oh. yeah, yeah. 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 later on. We're out yeah. of hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we're talking to Mr. Skin. And we have, oh, we have to hurry here. We have uh, the, the top 10 uh, nude scenes in uh, theatrical releases and uh, cable TV this year. What else is next? Yeah, yeah. well, let me, do you, need, you want me to just pick some... Uh, yeah. Once we can make it to yeah, the, give me, to the end, your, so you guys are up against the wall. Yeah, give me your best ones. Yeah, well, okay, okay, like number four, for instance, you guys mentioned Wolf of Wall Street. Where, well, Margot Robbie uh, won for Dreamland, and it's can I, I can't believe it's been almost seven years since the greatest swear movie of all time, and uh, she um, uh, did that breakthrough nude role in that. She was an unknown Australian uh, uh, soap opera actress, and now she's Harley Quinn and a huge A list star. Well. Right. This, this movie uh, came out on a month ago, November 17th, and Margot Robbie, it's called Dreamland, is nude. For, all you need to know, she's topless for two minutes. That's all you need to know. And, uh, is that enough time? It, it hap- yeah. Wait a minute. I forgot. No, Josh is on Paxil. Oh. <laughs> longer than that, Josh? I have to take it longer than that. Poor Josh. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that came in at number four, which... Uh, uh, was awesome, and it's uh, people love Margot Robbie. But as I go down this top ten list, um, I do want to make sure before before I go, I talk these last two. Is uh, um, there was a one of the great things about Netflix and and Hulu is they find these shows in other countries, and they bring them here and plop them right on the front page of of the Netflix or Hulu, and they become almost like mainstream you know, American shows. And a great example is this Normal People, which is a hit Hulu series from Ireland. And it's based on a novel, Normal People, by uh, Sally Rooney. And and she plays, this Daisy Edgar Jones is the star. And she plays this oddball uh, girl who's in love with this guy who's a Brady sports star. But what people loved about Normal People was how realistic it was. They felt like they were really observing real people it wasn't that contrived to mm-hmm. hollywood this you know stuff mm-hmm. that would happen and in the sixth episode daisy edgar jones does a full frontal nude selfie which i had so many people reach out to me they <laughs> wanted to know more about her and what's her story well for the whole year guys i thought that that was going to be the number one nude scene of the year because it happened much earlier i was like nobody's going to beat this nobody's going to beat this until one week ago today when a movie called Ammonite was released on VOD a week ago today. Mm. And it stars uh, Kate Winslet and Saoirse Ronan. Now, if you oh, don't yeah. know who Saoirse Ronan oh, is, sure. She's, sure. Yeah, she's been nominated for four Oscars, mm-hmm. A-list actress for sure. Kate Winslet, we all know. Kate Winslet plays a real-life fossil hunter who has an affair with a younger woman played by Saoirse Ronan. Um, I have never seen two li- two A-list actresses, women, have a sex scene that was this graphic um, in the in all my years of doing this, and it just blew my mind. I immediately said, "This is the number one nude scene of so the this year." Be, but this may be a double anatomy award. Oh my God, I don't know. But <laughs> if you go when you go to our website and just if you just look at the picture, even without watching the clip, um, Kate Winslet's on the bottom, and Sersha, let's just say, is grabbing a seat, if you will. So okay. uh, well, it's like uh, on that note, uh, yeah. Uh, you can find all the details at MrSkin.com. Mr. Skin, always a pleasure. Uh, and yeah, uh, uh, I, I hope there, I hope there's no last minute release that makes you change your top ten. Uh, <laughs> well, I, uh, technically, yeah. there are a couple of weeks left uh, in this month. 
month. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, uh, but it's a uh, yeah, great. Yeah, and thanks so much, uh, Tom, for having me on. And it's always a pleasure to see all you guys again. Yeah, so, you too. Uh, you. Happy holidays. Uh, very you good. You got it. Um, Take- now, um, oh, I was hoping we get one more skin pun in. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, for Christmas. I thought maybe the undoing would make that list because there was a nude scene in that that you go, whoa. This young woman in the Nicole Kidman, Hugh Grant thing that was just on uh, HBO. Okay. Well, it was yeah, like, yeah. wow. I haven't seen any of these movies, so I need to check them out. Uh, I do want to remind you that uh, these are some special seats in this room, <laughs> including, uh, I, I can't help but notice that Josh is sitting in the uh, I hate Steven Singer.com sidekick chair. Why do we call it that? What's the most hated jeweler in America? Who is it? Steven Singer. And Steven has something very special. And uh, act now, if you're thinking maybe of uh, getting engaged, and you, uh, I don't know, I don't have time, I don't want to deal with it. How about meeting Krista? Christy is Steven Singer's most beloved engagement ring. Talk about taking the stress and guesswork out of finding the perfect ring. It's a bright white, 100% eye flawless, near colorless, high quality, round, brilliant cut diamond, expertly set into a classic solitaire Tiffany setting that will withstand the test of time. How do you get it? It's you're just one click away. Check it out. I hate Stevensinger.com. By the way, I'll remind you. You make any kind of an order before about two o'clock Eastern. It's going out that day. Steven Singer famous, of course, for free shipping in the 12 month interest free financing and the 100 percent guarantee. Anything you get from Steven Singer, you're gonna like it. She's gonna like it. He's gonna like it. Steven Singer Jewelers, real jewelry, real experts for your real love. Once again, I hate Stevensinger.com. Tell Steven we said hello and thank you. This is the Bob and Tom show. Become a Bob and Tom VIP and get your Bob and Tom fix 24-7. Get all the info in the VIP area at BobandTom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Comedy, guess, Bob and Tom exclusives, and it's here on the internet, Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, just a heads up, if you missed part of today's show or want to hear it again, we'll have a replay for you beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern time right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Christopher's your host for Bob and Tom's all-day replay beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. We'll replay today's show back-to-back and again back-to-back right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. We learn a lot on the Bob and Tom show, and we'll be back in a moment to find out what we learned today. I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom sports update. The NFL's medical director says all protocols were followed when the Ravens wide receiver Des Bryant pulled from the field before... 
The 34-17 win over Dallas on Tuesday night. Bryant initially had an inconclusive test for COVID prior to warm-ups, but an ensuing test came up positive and caused him to set out a game against his former teammate. Dr. Sills said he made the final determination that there were no high-risk close contacts to the case, so there was no need to remove any other player. Former ABC baseball play-by-play announcer and now NFL Sunday Night Football announcer Al Michaels has been voted the Ford C. Frick Award for Broadcast Excellence by the Baseball Hall of Fame. And in college basketball last night, Michigan State of Virginia, Sam Houston at Houston, Robert Morris at West Virginia, UT Martin at Tennessee and Louisville at Wisconsin all postponed or canceled. In games that were played, Baylor, Wisconsin, Texas, Texas Tech, Richmond, and Florida State all win. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Wild giant pandas oh, roll wild. around in horse manure to help keep warm. Now, you roll and poop just to mask the B.O., right, Josh? Uh, that's right. My body odor is so <laughs> offensive, I roll in feces. <laughs> Why is your body odor so offensive, Josh? Well, I eat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> one is fat, they sweat. Yeah. And they often don't bathe because it's physically difficult. <laughs> that's right. I can barely fit in my home. Let alone my tub. I have to go out in the backyard where a team of men with <laughs> giant brushes on sticks scrub me down Much like a fun. circus elephant. Oh, that's what Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, this is Rodney Carrington, and you are listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. It's time now for another exciting episode of Murray Whiskey. Frontier Cavalry Officer. Cavalry Officer. That's right. All right. Okay. Murray Whiskey's in the cavalry. Because they've had an Indian invasion in Whiskeyville. They have? They decided to bring the cavalry, and Murray takes up his old post as colonel. Hmm. His old commission. He's sitting in his headquarters, and he's waiting for his newest officer. Mm-hmm. At the time, the appointed hour, this young lieutenant marches smartly in and salutes and says, that's your cue. Oh. Ernie Whiskey. Frontier Lieutenant. Oh, no. <laughs> Lieutenant Whiskey, allow me to give you a a brief of our weekly schedule. On Mondays, we march and we drill. No, sir. I don't march and I don't drill. Hmm. Uh, all right, well, on Tuesdays, we practice the charge and we groom horses. No, sir. I don't practice the charge and I don't groom horses, sir. Well. Oh, really? Well, Lieutenant... Whiskey, on Wednesdays, we drink and we wench. Ooh. No, sir. I don't drink and I don't wench, sir. Good God, man, are you queer? No, sir. Well, then you're not going to like Thursdays, either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tune in next week for another exciting episode of Murray Whiskey. Thank you, Cavalry Officer. Thank you, Ernie Whiskey. Thank you. Q95, it's the Bob and Tom Show. And Christy has the weather. It's going to be a great day today. Plenty of sunshine. Look for a high of 58. Clear tonight down to 40. Tomorrow, more clouds, but still high near 60. Currently 37. Thank you very much, Christy Lee. Now, I keep talking about it because I want you to go see it. The Christmas Night of Lights. Where? Indiana State Fairgrounds now through uh, New Year's weekend, actually. And um, it's COVID-friendly because you're in the car. And um, my only tip is uh, if you're taking the kids... Make sure that they take a potty break before you get in line. Mm-hmm. Just one of those things, okay? Uh, because you're driving around. It's fun. It's a great time. By the way, a great time tonight. My Indy TV, 23. At 1130, it'll be a show we call Bob and Tom Tonight. Hope to see you seeing us. Uh, welcome back once again to the Bob and Tom Show. Got a lot to get to here. Uh, we're going to get it all in, though, I'm telling you. First off, there's Ace, there's Chick, there's, let's see, there's Josh. Chris Lee is right over his shoulder in the glass yes, room sir. behind him. This is Tom. There's Willie. Let's get back to the action. I think we better kind of take our history lesson while we have time here. Yeah. Chick. I don't know if you remember. Time now for today in history, December 10th, 2020. Here's Tom. Uh, the, this is interesting. 1901, the first Nobel Prizes were awarded. Oh. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, would in the first one probably wouldn't be as cool because it didn't really have the gravitas. That no, was. I don't think. Right, right. No, probably didn't have the deal. big money either, right? <laughs> no, it's a big honor. I'm telling yeah, you, 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 right. you win the first one. Uh, yeah, and isn't the famous story that there isn't a math prize? 
Oh, really? Because uh, someone involved in its uh, wife ran off with a mathematician. Is that true? Are you making that up? No. You know what? That sounds right. Isn't that wow. The, that's in some... What is that? It's physics? Uh, huh. Liter literature? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So in, in any event, I think that's true. Uh, here's one. This is a question for Josh. 1962, the release of this movie, very big movie, David Lean made the movie Lawrence of Arabia. Does that hold up? Have you watched that? Ever? I've never seen it. Me either. Didn't so. that did that movie set a record for close-ups? <laughs> really? It was when I think of Lawrence of Arabia, I know the vistas and the hills and the sand. You see with the white thing. I, I always see Peter O'Toole in that hand, yeah, the rag. I yeah, haven't yeah, seen it exactly. since I was a kid. I don't remember much. I about love it. David Lean. I've I've just not seen that one. So like my friend intro. Billy always called it Lawrence of Agabia. <laughs> because apparently that that is funny. Weak, weak, weak. <laughs> That's very really good. Apparently, really shouldn't say. Apparently, okay. Mr. Uh, Lawrence was. Uh, um, let's see. Um, oh, there's, here we there's go. a famous director who watches Lawrence of Arabia every. Time before he starts a project. Steven Spielberg, I think. That's maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. Uh, this I just mentioned this. 2012, Johnny Manziel becomes the first freshman to win the Heisman Trophy. Mm -hmm. Who cares? What and is your infatuation with Johnny Manziel? <laughs> he, he took amazing talents and wasted that's, them. That's, Why are you infatuated with I'd that? I'd still like jerk? to see it come back. <laughs> uh, and I, uh, I like that uh, sitcom he's on, uh, The Amazing Mrs. Manziel. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's a, Art direction's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, great <laughs> costuming. Oh, okay. I love it. Yeah. Um, this the comedy styles are a little off, or a little ahead of their time. Is it pronounced yeah. Uruguay or Uruguay? No, I say Uruguay. No, say no, Ur uh, you are oh. gay. Okay, you are gay becomes the first country to legalize <laughs> marijuana. Yes. Thank you. I uh, want to be sensitive. It's you are gay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're ever in Uruguay, watch out for stone teenagers at drive-throughs. Oh my God, they uh, everywhere. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, and speaking of the Nobel Prize, uh, 2016, Bob Dylan awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. Hmm. Which there makes no sense because he... Yeah, he even kind of questioned it. Yeah, and then... Um, what the hell is But he waited four years to sell all the stuff. As he remember he famously said on a song, Money Doesn't Talk, It Swears. Boy, did he get sworn at. <laughs> 300 <laughs> million worth. He or got more. cussed out. Okay, uh, birthdays. Let's see. Ooh, Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. No longer with us. The late, yeah. Famous uh, for... Green Mile. Green Mile. Green and, Mile. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Bobby Flay, F-L-A-Y... I've always wondered why he didn't change his name to Filet. <laughs> He's a chef and all. Filet. Does he, I, does he have a... Oh, God, he has to have done this. What? i had done a show where he does a sandwich, calls it the Filet of Fish. Oh. The oh. F-L-A. He <laughs> has to have done that. Yeah, the Bobby <laughs> Filet of Fish. You are sure. truly fascina fascinated with McDonald's Filet of Fish sandwich. My favorite thing at McDonald's. How many times have you Filet of Fish and a fries. Oh, talks yeah. about it a lot, he needs to get one. Oh. Yeah. But go grab one, brother. They okay. got them. All right. I know. They're very, very... <laughs> and happy birthday, uh, Joe Burrow. Who's that? Cincinnati Bengal. Um, out, uh, out for the season. Yes, yeah, sadly. Oh, yes, sorry, but, uh, Joe. There, there you go. Um, and, uh, oh, we have one more thing. What? Uh, on this date in 1884, uh, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn was first published. Oh. Ah. Hmm. Okay. Can't read anymore. Uh, let's see, where were we? Oh, oh I know. We have to uh, discuss the many things we learned on today's show. Yes, brought to you by Granger. Products that keep your facility running is what Granger does best. They've been doing it for 90 years. Visit Granger.com for whatever you need, whenever you need it. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Thank you very much, Granger. Um, we had an interesting story about the, the world's largest Christmas tree. Made out of sardine cans. <laughs> and no, uh, we ha also had an interesting story about porta potties that uh, had electric f uh, lighted faces on them that set a record. Yeah, but I, th I thought it was somewhat distasteful. Oh, boy, you... <laughs> that's yeah, why, yeah, yeah he would, that's, he that's would. number one in his mind. He, does, he, wants he doesn't to be, care for any of that scatalog. Oh, he wants no, to be he tasteful. Hates it. Yeah, that's, right. that's Tom's very, very Last friends, time you were at a porta potty, Josh, seriously, when was the last time you used a porta potty? Oh, man, uh, maybe uh, over a year ago for sure. For me, last Sunday. Last Sunday? Were you oh, on a construction When site? you were on the farm? No, no, I was, yes, very good. When I was on, on the, the farm. I went to the special Christmas farm thing that they have. Yeah. Huh. All the animals. Yeah. Didn't been. go on the hayride, but he could do the porta potty. Have you seen those new porta potties, like the Rolls Royce of yeah. porta potties? Yeah, on a trailer. They're yeah, better, they're, they're, they're better than my bathroom at home. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, uh, in any event, there's this thing, it's a Christmas tree made out of sardine cans. Uh, <laughs> um, and <laughs> I pointed out it. that I have never actually eaten sardines. Hmm. And the chick, chick learned me that sardines is actually not one type of fish. It's there are various kinds of fishes found uh, near Sardinia. Okay. Mm. Uh, is that Sardinia thing true? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I still didn't know that. Okay. Uh, what's interesting is the name of the company that did it sounds fake. Nope. 
It's the Mega Global Corporation, which to me sounds like a like a, a front for Spectre in a yes. James Bond film. Sounds and, very fake. And their director is Otis J. Flywheel. Okay, okay, very good. Um, Ace Cosby is possibly not wearing pants. Yeah. We can't tell. He's sitting he's down. Well, and when we asked him, he said he hopes he's wearing pants, yes. but he didn't, didn't know. Yeah. Uh, Ace Cosby also n never swears, which I'd never noticed that. Insists on the bedroom participant also not swearing. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. I want to hear that filth. Get that be filth out Because Nicolas Cage is going to be hosting a show on Netflix called The History of Swear Words that will focus each of the six episodes on one swear word. All right. Um, um, let's see. Uh, Donnie Baker is working on his New Year's revolutions, as he calls them. And he's giving up watching porn, at least at the library. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently by request. <laughs> um, Al Jackson got his Omaha steaks that we sent him. He's enjoying, he, he already cooked one of them. We found out that Mount Everest is higher than they thought by, what, 29 feet? Yeah. And uh, Willie points out I don't need 130 spoons. Maybe give some to charity. And uh, Josh, uh, Josh, apparently in his childhood home, his mother had haunted spoons. Yeah, oh yeah, very haunted. Very, Love it. Uh, very. And uh, we, we went through everyone's favorite curse words. A uh, chick, the F word, me, the GD word. Josh, what did we come up with? For Horse you? S. Horse S and yeah. Willie? Uh, F, but GD gets an honorable mention. Okay. And Christy Lee? F. Okay. Uh, very, very good. <laughs> you get an A plus for your F. You know, this is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules. Or just scroll down to the bottom of the page and see contest rules. This is the Bob and Tom Show.